Tom is Stroud is. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom. Yep, da 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 da. Tom. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey, Chick. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, Chick. And our vacation is over. Josh Arnold has returned. Sorry to cut it short. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure Tom said, take another week. <laughs> He's in the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Yo, yo. And I'm Chick McGee and uh, skating at full strength. Here's here's Tom Griswold. He's, he's sun-kissed, Josh. You're a little sun-kissed. I was out in the sun, so of course it was kissing. Yeah. Did you get some fish? Uh, yeah, a few. Nothing too no noteworthy. But, yeah. uh, you have a shore lunch? No. <laughs> shore dinner? You look at him. Do look that. At, I, think, I think Josh has tied the record for wanting to leave. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he already looks mad. Back, coming back from a vacation. I had the record. He already, but I've, I've got two stories that are getting him really excited today. Oh, good. Uh, they're both they're both from yesterday, but you missed them. And um, one of them I, I pulled only because I knew you would love it, and then I forgot you weren't here. Oh, but I got here and you weren't here. And I remembered. Yeah, he was walking around the hallways going, "Well, only Josh would understand this." <laughs> Is this the scream? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's the Wilhelm scream. Wilhelm scream. And we're all, well, you uh, everyone else is yes. are ignorant. <laughs> yeah. Not all, stupid. There's a difference. Yeah. Well, see, there's a there is a difference between being stupid and ignorant, and many people are both, <laughs> and most of them vote in this country. Hey, hey, um, hey, hey. Uh, we have a. Uh, we have a uh, the, the uh, they have found the original recording of the Wilhelm scream this the recording session. Oh really? Yeah, it's and, really kind of interesting. And do you remember? Uh, well, okay, why don't you tell everybody what the Wilhelm scream is? It's uh, this recorded scream from the boy back in the day, and it's been used in primarily the Star Wars films. George Lucas loves it, so in every one of those movies, you hear a random. <laughs> It's very, uh, very distinct. When you hear it, you'll know it. Yeah, it's yeah. Interesting. And it's, um, I'm trying to think. I, I, I want to say 1951. It was recorded in the early 1950s and eventually became an in joke for audio engineers as well as audiences. Apparently, a lot of people like to put the Wilhelm scream into their movies. Uh, let's see. And it was apparently recorded by the guy who brought us the Purple People Eater. Oh, really? Yeah. Sheb Woolley. Yeah. Sheb Woolley. The yes. Sheb Woolley. Yep. Yeah. And Sheb is one of those guys you'll see him in an old movie and go, oh, that guy. And he is in the movie Hoosiers. Yeah. Hmm. Greatest sports movie of all time. Oh, that's bold, but... It, uh, it, oh. <laughs> it, it debuted in a swamp western called Distant Drums in 1951. Are you familiar with that movie? No, but I had heard that it had started in a western. Yeah. yeah so here's the... This is the... the um, some researchers were doing going through some stuff, and they found the original recording session. So this is Mr. Sheb Woolley, and it's it's this really it gives you it's such a throwaway. You can tell they're you know okay, and then it, who knew this would become legendary? So here it is. It's not real long. A man getting bit by an alligator, and he screams. Yeah. Okay, quiet. Hey, quiet. Do it out for me. Okay, right. Ah! Ah! The first one you did up here was much better. Much better. Ah! <laughs> not, not an owl, a real scream of pain. There it is. Yeah. I mean, it's what? we. This is we do this all the time. We have recording. We'll be recording something, and there'll be various takes over and over again. But that obviously became legendary, and it's such a sort of throwaway moment. Why is it called the Wilhelm scream? Uh, that I don't know. Hmm. It doesn't. Oh, okay. exclu it doesn't. It Maybe that's who was recording. That. Who knows? Yeah, no. could be. But here's uh, uh, the compilation of uh, Wilhelm screams. Uh, it, the first one is from Distant Drums. Then it's from Charge at Feather River. Then Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. Then Luke. Toy Story, Batman Returns, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark again, and Return of the Jedi. You can, and a couple of them, you can sort of place it. Um, because you'll hear other other voices, but here, here is the compilation of the Wilhelm scream. Buzz! Toy Story. Star Wars. 
So audio engineers love to have that thing on file, and it shows up over and yeah. over again. And the first time I'd heard of the Wilhelm scream, it was from Josh Arnold, who was the only one who was aware of it that I knew of. But uh, what a cool thing. We'll have to find out the origin of the name Wilhelm. That's a great question. This other letter, Josh, this applies to you because uh, you, uh, when you were a younger man, uh, probably in high school, developed the... Uh, uh, the, the, oh, yeah. Um, the, something, I guess you called it garaging. Oh, yes. Would you yeah. like to explain that one more time? Sure. Driving around with buddies looking for open garages in the neighborhoods, <laughs> seeing a, a refrigerator in the garage, and then we would get out, run into the garage, <laughs> and see if there was beer in the fridge, and if so, that we would we would steal it. And I'm you, guessing that, what, 90% of the time there was beer in the fridge? Yeah. Yeah. And that's you it. have said you've never had more fun in your life. Hey, we, we, boy, you, you ain't lived, Jake. Yeah. Is it well, just the feeling of knowing you're doing something you shouldn't do? I, I don't know. It, it, that score, the score itself was yeah, awesome. Yeah, because that has to be good. Just getting beer is always nice. Yeah, I hanging with buddies. I think it's the journey. I mean, it's, yeah, most of it was listening to music in the car. I think that's the closest anyone, any of us, will come to a caper like an Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and not to put too fine a point on it, but these days that could result in death. Yeah, no, it wasn't smart, and it wasn't. You could get uh, shot doing. Hey, there's somebody in the driveway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but yeah. now, let alone in our here's, garage. Here's the letter. Uh, this is from Eric. Um, <laughs> Hello, morning, arses and fisherman Josh. Oh, uh, ice fishing in Minnesota. My buddy Josh and I would walk around and talk with other people in their ice shacks for a fishing report. One of us would talk; the other would steal the beer outside of their shanty. We were 16 years old. <laughs> A game warden came up to our shack, saw the empty cans, and was just about to arrest us when his partner called him to help at the shanty next to us. Our neighbors on the ice were taken out of their ice house in handcuffs. Turned out they were making meth. Oh, in yeah. the ice shanty? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Smart. I'm, I'm older now and I can buy beer like an adult. Lucky we never got shot. Old Milwaukee and PBR is all we drank. Yeah. I should probably go to confession at St. Augustine's Cathedral in Austin, Minnesota. God knows I need it. Eric. Thanks for the letter, Eric. That's, that is great. Uh, we do have uh, the results of the uh, name the Wilhelm Scream already. Oh, we do? Um, apparently, the original Wilhelm Scream and Distant Drums. Um, let's see. It was... Uh, okay, sorry, this has just changed here. The character in the Feather River movie was named Wilhelm. Oh. And the Star Wars audio guy called it the Wilhelm scream. Hmm. I see. Um, I so. think they're when the first one, when they're trying to blow up the Death Star, the guy who gets ah. blown up before Luke, I think. Oh, is that right? Okay. He, he gets the Wilhelm <laughs> scream. It was used for Private Wilhelm, who was shot in the leg with an arrow and let, let out the distinctive scream. I think I would scream like that if I were shot in the leg with an arrow. Heck yeah. yeah, yeah. Or bit by an alligator. Yeah. yeah, I might say an expletive or two as well. Yeah, you know yeah. what? That guy actually showed a lot of restraint. Yes, he did. <laughs> Wilhelm. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> did you hear, though, what the uh, how much of a dick the producer was, though? No, nah, that first one yeah. was a lot better. Right. The first, I'm not hearing the the why and yell. Let's. Uh, We've like all me. been in that Sounds session. Does that remind yeah. you of anybody? Yeah. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. I'm not hearing the tea and hat. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're going to it up. It's, hey, it's look. The, the best directors. You always hear about when George Lucas said, no, say it this way. Do it this way. Right. That's how they do it. Oh, look, Blind Lemon. Uh, <laughs> could we hear a little more <laughs> enunciation? And what the hell is a mojo anyway? <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's move well, forward. Well, it's rising, whatever it is. Uh, we, I'm a mojo wake. Uh, we have uh, what coming up? NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. Uh, I have a problem with Mustang owners. Evidently, that's oh, really? uh, caused quite a concern. <laughs> I said something yesterday and in, in uh, jest, and uh, they don't they don't care for it. Oh boy. Uh, Boston oh, yeah. Marathon winners. Hey, they're Kenyan. And uh, <laughs> more stuff coming up. Boy, they know how to run. They sure do. Man, man. Uh, well, I guess you live with lions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what it is. You better lions. be fast. Lions, lions and tigers and elephants. Yeah. And lions. They got them all in Kenya, right? Chickens, wild chickens. Uh, we got some world records. <laughs> and another story an, Another story that I've been hanging on to that you're just going to hate, Josh. It's, it's, it's one of the topics that drives you more crazy than anything else. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll get to that this I have morning. an update on my underwear poll and a physician 
talking about airing it out. We'll talk about oh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and by it, she means... You air your panties out on a, a pole? No, 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 no. You're getting close. You but, are uh, getting close. Well, let me we'll tell you something. If I go home and them panties are up on that pole, I'm getting some. <laughs> <laughs> It's that time of the month there at half mass. That's right. It's sad. <laughs> well, it's either that time of the month or the Japanese are attacking. <laughs> now, uh, there's also a fascinating connection between uh, orgasms and socks. And not especially at my place. Not what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I've always said girls should wear socks because their feet are waving around well, in the wait, air. Wait till uh -huh. you hear this. I was yeah. stunned when I read this. Oh, huh, all right. So that, that's that's coming up. Also, we have a finger caught in the toilet and more delights. Right now, uh, the Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by Better Help. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing and the world is weird out there. Therapy is about deepening your own self-awareness and understanding of what's going on because uh, sometimes we don't even know what we want for ourselves. Uh, better help connects you with a licensed therapist. And it's very important to remember this. It's not a sign of weakness to ask for help. So um, better help, the, the idea of this is really, really pretty simple, which is hooking you up with a therapist and everything is done online. So it's uh, uh, significantly more convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. The way it works is you fill out a brief questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, switching therapists at any time can be done easily for no additional charge. And uh, you can discover your potential with better help. Here's what you do. You visit betterhelp.com slash BT show. The slash BT show bit gets you 10% off your first month. So you've been thinking about therapy. Maybe it's the time to check this out with better help. Betterhelp.com slash BT show. And it's betterhelp, H E L P, betterhelp.com slash BT show. Now, uh, once again, uh, coming up, we have uh, lots of interesting things in the news, including a new debate. Involving Reese's Pieces. Reese's Pieces. Hmm. You'll oh, find out. This is a Reese, very, very interesting. Reese's Cup. Uh, you'll find out. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, everybody. This is Mark Sweeney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. And my name is Mark Allison. Thanks so much for tuning in. On a Tuesday, it is April 18th. On the way, comedian Drew Lynch going to be joining... Part of the team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it Type Two Peanut Goo. But... <laughs> yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 11:30 at night. You shoved the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think he ate the rubber band that holds a legs out. I mean, come on. My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go off the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. Okay, these kids... They spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a Jif sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with nutter butters all over their face. It's a Daddy worked to feed us kids. Nobody worked harder than Daddy did in an old chicken house that was dusty and scalded and hot. And then the steak came along and busted Daddy on 600 pounds of pot. <laughs> <laughs> and Mama cooked in the kitchen. Lord, I can still smell the chicken. She was active in her church and kept our torn britches stitched. And then the steak came along, and it turns out Mama was a satanic voodoo witch. <laughs> Crazy people raising babies around Rottweilers with rabies. Sometimes folks you thought were wholesome wind up 
doing time in Folsom. <laughs> with Sister really teaching scripture at the Sunday school. They're swapping naked pictures with a heroin mule. <laughs> was she cutting up collards and boiling corn? Or making a million dollars in computer porn? <laughs> Daddy worked, <laughs> still selling grass, Mama jerked, but not in sister's ass. <laughs> we all did the best we could, which wasn't very good. And it kind of fades out. Doesn't it doesn't fade out. Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. The essential morning radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24 morning, Bob and Tom show. Yes, uh, if I could just have a few minutes of your time, I'd like to speak with you today about the joys of water sports. <laughs> is this Bob and or Tom? This is, uh, yeah, this is Bob. Yeah, uh, perhaps you already own a boat. However, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to upgrade your boat. Shut with... up, Ryan. I read the script all wrote. <laughs> 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 upgrade boats. I want him to buy one. I've almost got him, Donnie. Okay, okay. Uh, so... <laughs> the badass wave buster, uh, beast on the water. I am tell Chickie, look. Center and he'll buy it. Get a free tube if you're not a lard queen or like pork. I ain't even gave my pager number, man. Donnie, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore, Donnie. Get back to work, Randy. You oh. screwed it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. To the max, there's Maloney in our sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. The Bob and Tom Show presents memorable moments in presidential history. American presidents <laughs> have been immortalized in different ways. Washington had our nation's capital and an entire state named after him. Lincoln appears on the $5 bill as well as the penny. The first President Bush has an airport named after him. Perhaps when it comes to being remembered, no president was more royally screwed than James A. Garfield. <laughs> All he got was a stupid cartoon cat. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Bob and Tom's Memorable Moments in Presidential History. Yeah, there you go. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, which begs the question... Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. Hi there. He's at the <laughs> I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Special hello to our friends in the dairy, dairy farms right now making this delicious cream, which I just put in my uh, tea. Are you enjoying it? Oh. Good, good. Someone's working hard out there to make that happen. We appreciate it. Ooh, now, um, big dairy. Uh, we have. <laughs> hey, look. You ever had ice cream? <laughs> oh, you know, ice cream is good. You, know, uh, <laughs> you, ever, you ever tried ice cream? Why have you? Why have you uh, chosen that hill to die on? Ice cream? Big dairy. Yeah. Oh, because I think ice cream is great. Now, Who doesn't you know, like ice cream? Uh, all the ice cream they make is fake now. You just don't know it. Oh, God, you're so we wrong. We ran out of cows 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, speaking of yes. the milk lobby, have you, there's an ad that I saw on yeah. a billboard, and it says, milk hydrates better than water. And it's a guy working out in the gym with, like, the milk mustache. Mm. I thought it was a joke. How could That can't be true, right? Ask your father. He says it's true. Anything that has to do with milk or butter, oh, he's pro. I've always heard it's good to drink chocolate milk after a really good 
good workout. Sure, a hundred percent. But just the idea of some guy like on a hot summer's day going for a run on a track and then cooling off with a nice glass of milk makes me sick to my stomach. Uh, I don't know. That is a little rough. But now, now a bowl of ice cream after running a marathon, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of marathons, uh, Boston, I yep. love that dirty water. Remember that song? Oh, Boston, <laughs> you're my home. By the Standells, yes. Oh, great song. Yes. Only because of you. You don't remember that tune? I that mean, is a good tune. It's Is it a tune? It's raw. It's, uh, <laughs> what are we talking about? It's a tune. Uh, You'll hear it probably in uh, it, 30 seconds. It's it's yeah. a um, classic. <laughs> is that a Farfisa organ? You're a Farfisa organ. On that organ. song, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a guitar. I'm not here. <laughs> a tambourine. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you about my town. See, they violated my rules. It seems like something an Iggy Pop vocal that he's going for there. This is this is well ten years ten years before. Oh, okay. but, but yeah, it, it, Iggy probably loved this song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, just great garage band. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But uh, it's I love that dirty water. <laughs> Oh, Boston, you're my home. It was a national hit. It wasn't just a Boston thing. <laughs> it was a hit on the national newswire? <laughs> no, it was hit on the, uh, the Billboard charts, Dick Face. Uh, oh, <laughs> Dick Face. <laughs> Not even working around it this Bill, morning. Billboard, huh? Sorry. How's I, Billboard I, I, doing now, huh? How do you... <laughs> They're still out there. Yeah, there still are charts are out there of interest to some. Really? <laughs> yes, uh, sure. I just thought it would be a nice way, uh, the, the Standells, to get a little bit of uh, uh, Boston Marathon news. Well, that's uh, on down the list. We got NBA playoffs. We got NHL playoffs. Uh, okay. You got to do triage on this stuff. Okay, okay? You just can't willy-nilly <laughs> tell them about people making airplanes. And then, oh, by the way, the NBA had playoffs. Like, you can't do that, Tom. Okay, so you're prioritizing. I prioritize. I triage this stuff. You okay. know that. I prepare my. Uh, Christy and I work hard. Yeah, look, I got mine all See, look at that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> fanned out appropriately. Hard, yeah. hard, hard. It has a theme. It you're just over there. Each other. Uh, you're just over there bloviating and spitting and pointing. Got, got stuff in line over here, too. Yeah, chick yeah. has uh, scribbled notes on it. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, well, that, that may be a doodle. I, doodle. I, I, I think, uh, Chick, since you're ready to start sports, we should turn to Pat Godwin. Hey, yes, Pat. let's do it. Can you play the song? Uh, you played it late in the show yesterday. <laughs> it was the news story was about. Uh, we've had stories like this before about animals eating um, fermenting fruit, and for we remember the moose that uh, got drunk sure. from eating the, uh, the I guess the aging fruit that had fallen from the trees. Yeah, and now it's the drunk birds are worried in this about case, Georgia. Yes. In this I'm case, I'm Morty. I'm Morty the moose. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm Morty. Morty. <laughs> <laughs> There's another moose. He's been sober 10 years. He's setting the coffee up for everybody. Yeah. Uh, you can call me. I'll be your sponsor. But, uh, <laughs> this particular story, I believe, involved birds. Yeah. Are you a friend of Bullwinkle? Yes. Oh, in yeah. in, in, the, in the, the state of it. Georgia, the hey. DNR in Georgia, Georgia was rocky. We issued a warning about drunk birds. Apparently, the fruit-eating birds often consume fruit that has started to rot and ferment. They cause the birds to lose much of their coordination and capacity to fly. <laughs> causes them to crash into windows and other uh, obstacles. Hey, guys, I, I really think I've lost my capacity to fly. <laughs> hey, hey, don't let him fly. Come on, you can stay over in my nest. Shake his don't wings and stay my, my bottom is the ground. <laughs> stay here, man. I got some twigs in the corner That's for right, you, you I'll walk, off, I'll walk. Wouldn't you love to see a drunken bird walking? That would be so funny. <laughs> Where's South? <laughs> <laughs> now that's it. <laughs> you know something? I really got to poop. Where's a car? I'm going to climb Pops up, up there. On it. I got to poop. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, wait a second. I got, I'm going to fly to White Castle. You Who's know, it? people are noticing how often you mention defecation. You know that. Oh, here's the famous uh, from the fabulous Looney Tunes. This is the... Uh, Bird delivering babies oh, in the, yeah. the drunk stork, everybody. <laughs> well, what a day. 15 <laughs> deliveries and one to go. <laughs> Everybody's glad to see the stork. <laughs> Here, stork, have a drink to the new baby. <laughs> oh, have another. Come on, bottoms up. One for the road. You gotta be social. You gotta be social. <laughs> you just can't refuse the generous <laughs> hospitality. Okay. The hospitality. You just can't refuse them. <laughs> well, I better be going. <laughs> 
That mother gorilla must be getting worried. <laughs> God, that's funny. And didn't he switch the babies? Like, he gave the gorillas a, a human baby and gave uh, something Yeah, like I that. think you're right. Maybe something like well, that. Uh, the, but uh, we do have drunken birds in the news. And um, you should oh, you talk about uh, uh, human beings and their problems tweeting while drunk. Oh, sure. This is, this is a song about birds tweeting while drunk. Is that right, Pam? Treetops all day long. Hops and the barley's tubing on and on. All the little berries on the berry trees are fermented, and the birds think that they're sweet drunken robins. Twiddly doop, drunken robin. Poop, sapper, super, 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 poop. Go drunken robin, we're really gonna party tonight. What are you looking at, huh? Hold my berry. <laughs> Every little swallow of that fermented juice Has the birdies singing and acting real loose Falling out trees every night Georgia DNR gives them a few eyes Drunken Robin <laughs> Fruit Slurpy doop Drunken Robin <laughs> Go Drunken Robin We're really gonna party tonight I love you oh, I love you I love you oh, yeah. <laughs> Drunk birds Hey baby Hold my berry I, I, I is going to fly south for the winter, but I can't. i got to go to some meetings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Is that sports? <laughs> uh, NBA playoffs, Golden State Warriors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Sacramento Kings lit the beam light. Another beam lighting ceremony. Darren Fox scored 24 and had a back-breaking three-pointer. Dusted off the Golden State Warriors for the second time. They, Sacramento leads two games to none. Winning last night, 114-106. The Kings closed the game strong. After Golden State's Draymond Green was ejected for a flagrant foul, he stepped on DeMantis Sabonis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, honestly, if you watch the video, Sabonis is grabbing Draymond's leg. But still, uh, and Draymond said, I, I can only step so far. He, I, I, I had to step on him. It's when you're willing to punch your own teammate in the face. Yeah, you got to be a pretty crazy guy out there on the court, That's right? That's true. He punched uh, Jordan, Jordan Poole, Poole in yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure did. Uh, and Tyrese Maxey, a great, great sports name. Thirty-three last night. Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris had twenty and six. Jared, go to his apartment. Oh, sure. Yeah, the old uh, Maxey's bad. bad. Oh, <laughs> You know, that is funny. I got to tell you. The maxi pad. Welcome to the maxi pad. There's the maxi pad. There's the Rondo condo. Oh, oh I, that's my, the Rondo condo. I could go all day on. <laughs> anyway, uh, Philadelphia <laughs> winning 96-84. Six or two games done leading that one. Uh, and uh, NHL last night, all these uh, first games, of course, uh, Carolina over the Islanders, Boston beat Florida as the Bruins continue to roll. Kings in overtime beat Edmonton and Minnesota in overtime beat the Dallas Stars. Ah, oh, that's, a, that's a shame, a team in Dallas losing. Oh, boy, <laughs> that's, that's tough. And Jalen Hurts is set to sign one of, Excuse if me, not I, the... What was the reference there? Love Hurts. Love Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Oh. Jalen Hurts. Uh, hey, it's dead on, okay? <laughs> he doesn't like this because he doesn't like you joking about any Philadelphia QB that's not Gardner Minshew. I think that's why oh, that's he takes true. issue with oh. your Jalen Hurts joke. Gardner. Jalen Hurts. Love it. Bingo. Okay, okay. Uh, 220, uh, somebody hold Christy while I'm giving you these numbers. Five years, $255 million, 179.3 Guaranteed. Why didn't they just go full boat and say 180 guaranteed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what the math is. No, no, we're going to keep that extra 700000 Don't you worry about it. I think the math is whatever Deshaun Watson got, this has a little bit more. Somewhere I think that's... Lamar Jackson is smiling and <laughs> thinking he's going to get this money, but I don't think he will. I'm saying... Lamar Jackson's going to sit out this season. Really? You wait and see. Somebody write that down. Write that down, Tom. Um, Christy, it's pretty cool. This is the biggest contract for any NFL player ever. And a woman did it. All female management team. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. She's a badass. She is a badass. Or they just wanted the nagging to stop. <laughs> <laughs> just stop Fine. talking. I'll pay anything. We'll pay whatever. Just but even oh, if that's boy. the case, we should use this as a strategy going forward. You know, that's what OJ said. That's, <laughs> why he's, you know, he's, that's where the noise was coming from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Oh. 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 Yeah. I see. <laughs> and from Boston, it's Marathon Monday, kids. Uh, Patriot Day, defending champ Evans Chevette, C-H-E-B-E-T, won the Boston Marathon again. 
He surged in front Again? of course at Heartbreak Hill. Yeah, one last year. You're not allowed to do it anymore, sir. <laughs> um, oh, really? Yes. <laughs> This, other people want to win, too, That's right. man. Don't be a jerk about this. 26.2, whatever the hell it is, miles. Two hours, five minutes. Jeez. That's, <laughs> That's crazy. As I even... said earlier off the air, I can't drive 25 miles in, <laughs> in two hours. You can't even watch most Scorsese movies in that amount of time. Right. In a marathon. Man. He could have been watching The Irishman on his special VR goggles awesome. and wouldn't have finished. <laughs> yeah, I'll finish it next year. Yeah, wouldn't have finished the movie, but he got, he got done with the race. Just wow. cracked the second act. Man. And meanwhile, Helen O'Beary... Uh, she won the uh, ladies' uh, side. Two hours. She's also from uh, Kenya. Two hours, 21 minutes, 38 seconds. Can Josh, your astute analysis as to why the Kenyans dominate this sport? Uh, you live around lions. See if you aren't running fast. <laughs> I demand to know what actual animals are in Kenya because I know we, we can't we can't be right with lions. And Sounds tigers. right, doesn't it? Yeah, lions yeah. and tigers and bears and the chickens. tigers, I believe, are primarily in India. Nope, I right. don't think so. Yes. Kenya's loud, lousy with them. I don't think so. Wildebeest. They got wildebeest. They oh, gazelles. they got wildebeest. Oh, they have yeah. gazelles, impalas, antelope, zebras, wildebeest, water bucks, Maasai giraffes, impalas. cheetahs. Everybody got a car? They've got impalas. <laughs> well, that's even better. You live around cheetahs. See if you don't run fast. Yeah. Mm. Outrun yeah. a cheetah. Yeah. How, how did they? How did, you, you, prove to me a cheetah can run 80 miles an hour. Prove to me. I mean, they have, any, they have any amount of video. They have video, uh, special cameras. They they put a radar gun on him? <laughs> sure. The five That's probably how they do animals. it. I don't think they do. Five main animals in Kenya. Oh, okay. Lion. Okay, there leopard, are Leopard. Rhino. Elephant. And cape buffalo. There you go. Oh, those are the ones with the capes. They wear capes. <laughs> yeah. You know, not all <laughs> buffalo <laughs> wear capes. <laughs> not everybody can Hardest work in buffalo in show business. Look at me. He's a hero. Uh, uh, coming up in the news. We have uh, important news about oh. Reese's uh, Pieces. Uh, actually, something a little bit different. We have um, a world record or two. Reese's Pieces. And uh, uh, a story that we did yesterday briefly that I want to do for Josh because it's going to make him so angry. Oh, and real quick, <laughs> I need to apologize, evidently, to all Mustang owners. I really... Mustang owners! I, got, I really got taken to task on the email and Twitter yesterday. Uh, dear Chick, I have a Mustang. This is from Bob, 30 years old, and this year, and it may not be perfect, but it's my pride and joy. I've owned this Mustang since 2006. It has 75,000 plus miles on it. That's pretty good. That is good. I can feel my blood boil and my head wants to explode when I hear you call a Mustang a Stang. <laughs> Evidently, he took exception. Well, but I, this I, is the Mustang he likes. Oh, the, it's cool. The square backed one instead okay, of the fast back. The, uh, it looks like a Vega. Come didn't on. they just announce that they're going to, um, the next Mustang will be electric? Well, I think everything's going to be electric here pretty soon, but probably. Aren't they stopping yeah. making the current yeah. ones? Yeah. I think and, right. uh, yeah, the uh, the term Stang is not. Uh, I think uh, if you know, uh, Mustang owners will tell me. That. You didn't even say that they're like bad drivers. You didn't call them girly. You just said it's a Stang and they got so angry. You walk on the lot, you show that guy, the, the, car, the salesman. And you go, hey, I'd like to see whatever you have in a Stang. He knows you mean business. No, but That's the Mustang right. Mach E you is the electric the Mustang. It's out now. Oh, it is out already. Mm -hmm. Okay, seventy-three thousand dollars. <laughs> hey, uh, how long is that? Uh, how long is that cord they have for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the story was that in 1964, a Ford Mustang debuted at the World's Fair. The original Mustang. What a great car! But the fastback version, right? A buddy of mine had that one. Um, I just remember my friend had a powder blue convertible. I had a powder his blue. His, his dad Aww. did. A powder blue convertible Mustang. It was the, the, the sexiest car at the time. Really? Oh, yeah. That's it. Do you think powder blue is sexy? It huh? was at the time. That was the one. Oh. You, you had Joey Heatherton in it. Could not get an H.J., his friend. Yeah. <laughs> God, my, 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 friend, my friend's dad. <laughs> Everybody. Your friend what? Yeah. You're telling me your friend's dad would want an, a hand job? Is that what you're telling me? I, I think he would. That's why you get a must. That's why you get a stang. That's right. <laughs> stang. Oh, and and we were talking about showering with other people yesterday. Oh boy. For whatever reason, and yeah. Tom said he'd never done that. What? Uh, and a listener uh, emailed me and said, yes, he has, because his oh, maid, Paula, <laughs> would give Tom a shower Never every night until Tom got too big to shower. Did we just oh, figure this out? Tommy. Oh, Tommy. This, 
this is an entire fantasy and a lie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paula. Love. 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 That was so Tom. Big. Oh, Tom. Oh, Paula. <laughs> Paula was about 90 when I was a kid. So, <laughs> And didn't you always That's think it was like Eye of the, uh, Sutherland and Eye of the Needle? <laughs> if she was radioing <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> Paula would always be talking on the phone with her See? sister, Helga. Yes. And um, <laughs> the German language uh, to, the, to a young American ear. Very guttural. In the 60s. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> scary. I had the um, coordinates. You know, it always sounded like a Schlitzwalk. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say Sch Schmidt talker? Uh, no, uh, boy. <laughs> Wait, she was too old for you? She was yeah. Yeah. Paula. Uh, right now. I'll take care of Tom. We're going to change topics. Boy. It's shower time, baby. We'll get back to the shower topic <laughs> because I have some questions. And we also have Christie's. Uh, statement from her mother about uh, airing it out, airing it out, and yeah. re removing the. Uh, you don't wear panties at night. I bet your mom airs it out every night. Right now, right now, I'd like to remind you <laughs> that your taste buds may be calling, saying, "Hey, enough of this. We need some great food." Hello Fresh has come to the rescue. They deliver everything you need to savor the spring season. Right now, Hello Fresh has a special offer out there, knocking fifty percent off. The usual cost. Here's what I'm talking about. You go to HelloFresh.com slash BTShow50. What's happening at HelloFresh especially includes these new fast and fresh options you put together in 15 minutes or less. And, of course, every week HelloFresh has more than 40 different recipes. And it's not just the recipes. They're buying the food and sending it to you ready to rock. And it's all fresh and ready to go and pre-measured. Willie, what have you been working on over there? Check out the pork carnitas tacos with pickled onion and Monterey Jack cheese. HelloFresh sends you 12 ingredients. Put those together in six simple steps. In 35 minutes, you have this delicious one-pan meal that you made at home with help from HelloFresh. Sign up today. 50% off plus your first box from HelloFresh. Ships for free if you use the code BTSHOW50. That's HelloFresh.com slash BTSHOW50. Once again, the code BTSHOW50 like Bob Tom Show 50. HelloFresh.com slash BTSHOW50. Uh, by the way, great for uh, helping the kids learn how to cook and uh, great for date night, Josh. Just you and your sweetie uh, throwing together something fancy, <laughs> maybe on the side, a little bit of champagne. Oh, yeah. How about you and me? Hello, Fred. Yeah, and I'm looking for the wife. I'll cook with you. Okay, okay we'll yeah. have the Chick McGee and the yeah. wife. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 50. Coming right back. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888-262-8661. More Bob and Tom next. Hi, man, it's Donnie Baker. Guess what? I saved up some money and bought this new badass spy camera. I swear to God I did. Check this thing out. Man, they got so much stuff in here. This is badass. I swear to God it is. You wouldn't think a radio station have so many pictures. Hey, look. It's Bob and Tom. Man, something about that don't look right. Let's see if we can make it better. One down. Perfect. Hi, Christy. Hey, what are you doing here, Donnie? You're well, not, you're not allowed back here. No, it's Homeland Security. I'm supposed to come back here and check you for humps today. Because you're not going to get your hands on me. Okay, you if you don't like this one, how about let me use this one? <laughs> you know, the touch of a whiff is a healing touch. No, no. Uh, no. Better yet, how about fur on fur? <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> The 
essential morning radio. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Bob and Tom Show on a Tuesday. It's April 18th. Hope you caught the show on Monday. Comedian Leanne Morgan and also Reno Collier stopped by with his country fried take on taxes. Of course, today is tax day. Hate to be the guy to remind you of that, but maybe someone should remind you of that. Today is the day, believe it or not, that taxes are due. So make sure you get in your paperwork for that. Again, hate talking about it, hate the taxes, but I guess we all have to deal with that aspect. It is Tuesday, April 18th. Comedian Drew Lynch going to be joining us this morning right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom News Update. It's tax day, and the IRS says it has answered 2 million more calls this tax filing season than a year ago, with the average phone wait time now at four minutes, down considerably from 27 minutes this time last year. The federal tax administrator is promoting its improved customer service and giving credit to a big boost in funding pushed through Congress last year. Additionally, the agency served 100,000 more taxpayers in person and digitized 80 times more paper forms than in 2022. A federal appeals court has overturned Berkeley, California's first-in-the-nation ban on natural gas and new construction, agreeing with restaurant owners who argued the city bypassed federal energy regulations when it approved the ordinance. The measure, which took effect in 2020, to cheers from environmentalists who intended to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases, of course, that contribute to global warming, with some exceptions, though, it banned new residential and commercial buildings from installing natural gas piping in favor of electrical lines. And Northern Light enthusiasts have gotten a surprise mixed in with the green band of light dancing in the Alaska skies. A light baby blue spiral resembling a galaxy appeared amid the aurora for a few minutes. The cause? Simply excess fuel that had been released from a SpaceX rocket that launched from California about three hours before the spiral appeared. The appearance of the swirl was caught in time lapse on the Geophysical Institute's All Sky Camera and then shared worldwide. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. My best friend and I used to make out at bars to attract guys. All right. And now she's in a serious relationship and she doesn't want to do that anymore. (laughs) So now her boyfriend is keeping her away from me like I'm the bad influence when it was actually mostly her idea. And I'm really hurt that she's ditching me for him. Well, I'm sure they have more to their relationship than just making out at bars to attract guys. Oddly enough, that's all they have. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Don't take that away from them. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. They don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, my God! There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. It's the most talked about show on television, The Bachelorette, where 25 eligible bachelors try to win the hand of one single woman. And now, Bob and Tom Television brings you a new twist on this hit show. She's 30 and single. She's... What the hell do you mean by that? Oh, uh, uh, nothing. Meet Linda Jackson. Now, here come the fellas. Say hello to Todd Williams. Hi, Linda. I'm really pleased to... Yeah. Next. <laughs> and here's our next eligible guy. Say hello to... Hold it. Are you really going to say each time, say hello to your dick ding dong or whatever? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Here he is, Jerry Peterson. Hello, Linda. I can't tell you how happy I am to finally meet you. And... Right, right. Uh, what do you do, Jerry? Uh, well, I own my own consulting business and... Ah, uh, consulting, eh? <laughs> and when did you lose your Amway dealership, Jerry? Huh? Jeez, <laughs> what a bitch. She's the bitchlerette. <laughs> She's single, pissed off, and is looking for money. Lots of money. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm Phil. Yeah, did you forget something? No, I don't think so. Any Gift? Gift? I didn't know that we were... Mm, (laughs) Bye-bye. Loser. (laughs) Wow. Tune in to Bob and Tom TV and see why she's called the Bitchlerette. She's on the prowl and she's got... Shut your (laughs) hole and bring on the rich numbers. Uh, Oh, and Bob. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. 
<clears throat> Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello, Chick McGee. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. With an email uh, teaching us more about Kenya. Excellent. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. What up, big dog? I'm Chick McGee, the big dog. <laughs> and... <laughs> Here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. First things first, now, we uh, wanted to welcome Josh back from his fishing trip. If Thank you. you. you with a little interesting news story about the uh, Wilhelm scream, a sound effect used in um, used in a, a variety of movies we found out, and particularly enjoyed by the likes of George Lucas. Uh, recorded in the early 50s, perhaps even 50 or 51, but they just found the original recording session with Sheb Woolley. <laughs> Um, it's what fascinating was his, stuff. What, was Sheb a nickname or was it short for something? Uh, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what that was, Sheb. I, I'm sure we can find I'll out. I'll look it up. Like uh, Shep Wooly. Sheb Amaya. I feel like back then they were just putting syllables together and calling it a nickname, you know? Just give a couple consonants up top, a couple at the bottom, let's move. I think Wooly was a nickname, actually, a, a mass of pubes. Uh, uh, what? Like uh, could we possibly stay on topic for five seconds? Sweater. We are, Sheb Wooly. The Wilhelm scream. A man getting bit by an alligator in the screen. Here's the second. Do it out, George. Okay, right here. Oh! Oh! The first one you did up there. I like with the my second friend. one better. Oh! No, not, not an owl. A real scream. Pain. Oh! That's it. Oh! Oh! That's, that's the Wilhelm scream. You know, we Shelby our... is his name. Shelby Frederick Woolley. Do you yeah. think those guys saw each other through the cigarette smoke? <laughs> <laughs> When you hear that, don't you just... Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of guys who had an amazing voice uh, helped along by cigarettes and the raspiness of their voice. You know, we have our own Wilhelm scream here. The, the time I faked the orgasm mm -hmm. for that one bit, we, <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. we never could get it back. Chick, it's so perfect. Yeah. The relief in your voice, oh, the regrets. Oh, oh God. It, it is hot. Yeah. But I right mean, now, we, have a, we were talking about the fact that you can hear the producer urging Sheb to uh, you know, with the kind of scream he wants, and they sure. get it, they get it pretty quickly. And then, of course, it, it ends up showing up in movies like Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, Toy Story, Batman Returns. It's a famous scream. We've got uh, uh, Wayne out there driving a truck right now. Hi, Wayne. And Wayne is uh, apparently a, a part-time producer of this show. Oh, oh boy, Wayne! No. And, and Wayne <laughs> Wayne has instructed me to make, do the following production. Wayne, I hope I give this the justice that it deserves. So now we're taking listeners producing. <laughs> I like suggestions. it. Uh, this is so stupid. It's it's just brilliant. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, courtesy of Wayne, this uh, production idea. Mr. Pister. Oh. Mr. Pister. <laughs> <laughs> If I could offer, I think you were a little early. Okay, you, well, here we go. Yeah. Mr. Fister! Oh! Mr. Fister! Oh! <laughs> That's pretty good. Right there, yeah. there we go. Nice. Nice timing. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Wayne. Driving that truck out there, Wayne. We appreciate you very much. God, that is so Do you think that was just like studio work? Did he get paid for that day and that was it? Probably. Oh, here we go. Uh, the R. Wilhelm scream, my orgasm. Ready? Oh! oh. There's the end of it, yeah. Oh, just the end, I guess. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. He was probably, it's hard to say, he, he could have been doing um, overdubbing for something where they were yeah. they, they play the movie and what do they call that? ADR? What's that called when they do that? ADR. Um, yeah, additional dialogue recording. Yeah, something like that. And they just said... Looping. <laughs> Some people call it looping. <laughs> looping, yeah. Looping, yeah, that's what it would be. Willie, did Maybe. you have ADR early on? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, yeah said I said that. it. It's yeah. okay. It's I can't say anything when Josh is in here. It's just listening to Josh, so we're all good. <laughs> oh, well. well. You know, I did say when Josh was on vacation, it's a lot like we all get a vacation. Isn't that right, Tom? Uh-huh. I, mean, I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a lot easier. I had no the idea. I knew I had a Nobody problem. throwing conversational hand grenades I into the... I uh, didn't, didn't have to talk Willie about books or Chucky or whoever. Yeah, man. <laughs> nice. It's got to be a nice Mr. Fister! Oh! Mr. Fister! Ah! <laughs> wow. Uh, nice. This is from Brian. How could Tom forget his life-altering encounter with his friend's mother's giant red bush in a group shower? Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. We were talking about showers yesterday. Talking about so Shep you Woolley. did shower with somebody. <laughs> well, that's because I was a little boy at the time, and I was in a sleepover. Was that in a bathtub shower? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Brian would like to apologize... For 
to Pat. Uh, he says, I was the guy who suggested a pizza song every day during Ace's. Uh, uh, you have an address for him? Pizza. <laughs> I, I do, yeah. Pat, you want to deliver him a pizza? <laughs> yeah, I'll deliver him a pizza. <laughs> Extra meat lovers, that um, guy. Oddly enough, coming up in the news today, we have a hero who is a pizza delivery guy. That's right. You might have seen this on the news last night. Anybody? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's fantastic. It's pretty funny. It's a guy delivering pizzas that steps up, and you'll hear what he did. Uh, to be a, a helpful, good citizen, if you will. That was such a big damn deal when I was a kid. Ordering a pizza. My parents would oh. leave me money for a pizza. So fun. God. 20 bucks on the table. So great. Did you, do you, ever, do you ever do that? You no, probably sure. didn't. didn't. Order do a pizza. What? Order a pizza to your house. It seemed like it took forever back in yeah, the day, though. It remember? Did. It'd be like an hour and a half. No. I was in that, like, <laughs> early 2000s. Everyone was doing that 30 minutes or less promo for the most part. Oh, yeah. It was always quick when I was young. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, we've got our culture has gotten where it has to be too quick for everything. It's not right. You shouldn't. You, know, you can go online. And, you know what else isn't right in our society? Well, no, it's just. Let, I mean, let's it's, start it's, a list. You were <laughs> causing How about other harm? other people? I think would be number one. Be? Do you remember the name of the pe first pizza place that you were, would go to? Uh, there were two actually. Ronetti's. I don't think Ronetti's is there anymore. But Cappy's Pizza is still like they move. They're on Main Street right now in London, Ohio. Pasquale's. Cappy's, baby. That was ours. What was your Geraci's? Geraci's. The best. Oh, really? Ever. Yeah. Hmm. And they uh, have parking. Uh, <laughs> did they have parking? Geraci's parking. You ever heard of it? No. Jurassic Park joke. Move on. Wow. Nothing to see you. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Stop the show. <laughs> wow. Did anybody hey. get that? Wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were making fun of the fact that he only goes to places that don't have parking. <laughs> oh, I should have stayed there. Uh, okay. Uh, Willie, what was the go-to place for you? Uh, Basbo, right? Oh. Papa John's? Yeah, yeah Basbo. I like Jets there. now. Jets are We had from. Pantera's. There's a Giacomo's I like. We had yeah. Sabatini's. Pantera. At Pantera's, when you called, would you scream your order? Respect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, um, Ace, when you were a kid, what was the pizza place? Uh, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Yeah. Okay, so the chains had already had already moved in. Um, well, well, coming up in sports, by the way, we have one? Uh, world records coming up, Tom. And okay. uh, more about your uh, housekeeper, I think. <laughs> okay, and uh, we have a, a, a Roomba escaping. Uh, looking escaping? For, for, freedom, for freedom. And interesting things about... Um, <laughs> it's out there wild? About airing out panties, ladies, uh, mm. from Christy. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube channel. Stanhope is with us. Uh, let's see, we've established a few things. Doug is a single man, but he's living with a woman in... Um, her, in sin. Her, her name is Bingo. Her nickname, yeah. Uh, she, uh, um, <laughs> they live in, is it Bisbee? Christy yes. felt the name to <laughs> You know, this, I, I, I get a great Bingo story, but I, like, mm -hmm. her, she's got a really... Uh, Careful. Conservative side of our family that listens to your show, and oh, I have a okay. great story, and I can't tell it. No, oh, that's oh. too bad. Well, she's Let very nice. We, we, we have met a, Bingo. She's very yes, nice. Yes, she's mm -hmm. very nice. Mm -hmm. and we I'm did, a, we did a charity uh, poker event at in Miami last week. This yeah. is the card game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. With porn stars <laughs> and me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because uh -huh. you hear poker. Doug's yeah. naked a lot. Did I mention that? You hear poker. Not anymore. Not anymore? Those days are over. Yeah. I bloated up when I quit smoking. I just, yeah. It got okay. all achy. Yeah, I get all bloated and fat, and mm -hmm. see, I, I try not to be naked as much as possible. I'm sure Chick <laughs> can feel me on this oh, one. Oh, yeah, I feel you, brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the, the only po point of my story is uh, if you're going to... Uh, if you're going to have a, uh, a threesome in a sleazy Best Western in Miami with a giant pile of stepped-on blow <laughs> with Ginger Lynn, mm -hmm. do it in 1983. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying about last weekend. Fair enough. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Didn't, didn't, yeah. Work, didn't work yeah. out well. Yeah. Yeah. Nearing 50. <laughs> hey, wait a things minute. Things I should have done as a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why did I finally do this now? <laughs> Hey,
Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. I'm Mark Allison. You know you can see the Bob and Tom Show on our YouTube channel. That's right, anytime, even right now. Of course, we're on a break right now. But once we come back, go to YouTube and search the Bob and Tom Show, and you can watch the show in real time as it happens. We've got cameras in studio. What's that going to cost me, you ask? Nothing. It's free. You can watch for free. You can listen for free. Free, free, free. That's what we're all about here at the Bob and Tom Show. Free laughs, and we'll have more of those coming up after the break on Bob and Tom 24-7. I'm Chick McGee with your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Jalen Hurts set to sign one of the richest deals in NFL history. Five years, $255 million extension with the Eagles, including $179.3 million guaranteed. NBA playoffs last night. Darren Fox scored 24, made a back-breaking three-pointer that led the playoff newcomer Sacramento Kings to a second straight home victory over the defending champ Golden State Warriors, 114-106. Draymond Green ejected from that game after stomping on the chest of Sacramento's DeMontis Sabonis. The play happened in the fourth quarter of that game, too. NHL playoffs last night, Carolina and Boston win in regulation, Los Angeles and Minnesota win in overtime. Major League Baseball interleague action. Philly at the White Sox postponed. Cincinnati beat Tampa Bay. Milwaukee over Seattle. The Cubs beat Oakland. The American League, the Angels, Texas, and Houston win. Cleveland at Detroit postponed. And in the National League, Miami, Arizona, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and the Mets all win. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Bob and Tom. Well, meaning, but... Yeah, they're... They're all messed up. More than slightly confused. How many times have you been auditioning for, like, a civic theater production or a Broadway musical or a church show or a school show or something like that, and you had a great audition, you sang a song, maybe you told a joke or two, and then the director comes up to you and says, ah, Great audition, kid, and uh, your resume looks good, but uh, do you know any pig Latin? <laughs> You'll never be caught in this position again if you enroll now in Haji's Academy of Theatrical Arts in Pig Latin. <laughs> at Haji Academy of Theatrical Arts in Pig Latin, you'll learn to act your way through some of the world's greatest theatrical masterpieces, and you'll do them entirely in Pig Latin. Things like Death of a oh, Salesman. Oh, at yeah, Ime oh, at day. Oh, Old reruns of Hogan's Heroes. Ink clay. Oh, yay, idiot, yay. Oh, yay, ice ray. Enroll J. Orkalter Bay. <laughs> and of course, the classics of Shakespeare. Ute eBay. Or ye, atne, Ute eBay. At they, is ye, a ye, eschenque. At the way, a ye, There's still some financial overnay. scholarships Ute available for women aged 18 to 25. Let me teach you to act in big Latin. For more information, write to Haji or phone 1-800-UXHME. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24 Good morning, Bob and Tom show. Good morning, how you guys doing? Fine, we're a little stunned, but we're okay. I uh, got one for you, I was telling him, uh, when I was in a service in Germany, I hooked up with another service member, and uh, she said, uh, choke me, you dirty Bastard, I'm going to go like a freight train. <laughs> Wait, no, hold on. <laughs> Write that you down, Chick. Choke me, you, you dirty bastard. bastard. I'm going to go like, like a, a freight train. train. All right. I like the looks of that. <laughs> yes, I like that very much. Oh, my. Yeah, she was kind of weird. She used to like me to choke her with uh, that rubber surgical tubing. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a little work, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that oh, takes a little work. Yeah, now, I think that's probably to stop her from farting, Tom. <laughs> you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. Hi, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. My name is Jim Gaffigan. I have to go and... Well, I just had a hop ah, so you know where I'm going. Coming up. 
Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hey, Pat. There's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Chick. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee at the sports desk. Here's Tom Griswold. Tommy. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, we were talking about the Boston Marathon. Yep. And then uh, I played a great song from the past that you don't hear enough. Of course, I'm talking about the Standells classic. You hear it? If I hear it once a year for the Boston Marathon, I'm fine. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. Great song. I highly recommend it. But I, I got a nice uh, letter here um, uh, from uh, Paul. He writes, if the Boston Red Sox win at Fenway, they play Dirty Water immediately after the last out. Kids will beg their parents not to leave early because they want to sing along with the Standells. Cool. That a, that's a great tradition. Uh, but uh, we'll uh, huh. not play the song, apparently. Not 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 voted in by the by the staff. I enjoy it. I've okay. always liked okay. that one. Since okay. when has that ever stopped you? That's true. That's true. Um, uh, now, what is, else is happening in sports? Uh, Oakland uh, Athletics. Uh, I've always read that you're supposed to stay away from this word, but uh, here we go. Uh, Oakland A's fans are hosting a reverse boycott uh, to on. show their Wait support for the mean? team. To show their, rev show their support. A so, reverse boycott. So instead of... You're not not going. They're just supporting them. So if you're not not going, you're going. Is go. there a boycott going on? The Athletics are currently 3-13 and 13 this season and in last place in the American League West. They are also under a constant threat to relocate. The team's fans are now trying to send the message that they would support the franchise if they were given a winner and an ownership that was invested in winning. They obviously feel like they, mm. the ownership now does not, is not in the winning business. They're promising to hold a reverse boycott on June 13th when the A's host the Tampa Bay Rays. Whoever's running, it's an idiot. <laughs> so they're, they're going to go to the game to show that they still want to support this team? Yes. That's nice. I yeah, think, that's uh, that's nice, but what, I think the, they where, had where like, the hell did they get the term reverse boycott? I think the uh, they had like 3,000 people at one game or something like that. Or reverse or boycott sounds like a sex move. I gave her the old reverse boycott. No, that's reverse cowgirl. <laughs> she won't be walking. <laughs> Do you know what reverse... You, you yell strike as you... <laughs> sodomize Here, here's our, uh, <laughs> our expert on sexology is Josh Arnold. Josh, would you explain to uh, Tom what a reverse cowgirl is? Oh, it's just like a cowgirl, but uh, in reverse. Uh, I, I took okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. it. I knew he wouldn't want to hear it. Uh, I believe it was Dottie Baker who said that he doesn't believe in that because in this house we never turn our back on family. That's right. And if that's that doesn't line. make you laugh... Reverse Reverse boy, boycott, reverse cowgirl. Um, I want to say a special hello to uh, Jamie, who um, loved hearing a little bit of uh, dirty water. <laughs> and he said, I'm on my way, by the way, Tom, to pick up milk at the dairy and deliver it to the processor. How about that? Keep on trucking. So see, supporting right. the, the great American dairy industry. Working hard. And I got a suggestion. Uh, you're an adult. Go with Jim or James. Oh, really? Or Jimmy. Jay, I'm Jamie. Really, this is coming Grow from up. a guy called Chick. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's your fault, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. We I appreciate you. I fine over here with Chucky. But no, huh? <laughs> so I, <clears throat> I don't understand the reverse boycott thing, but supporting the team is all fine. Go for it. Yeah, go to the ball game. Yeah, I'm Why sorry. not? I'm Have sorry. some fun. Beautiful day there on the bench. Sorry I did that story. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Where are people saying they're going to move to? Is that I haven't heard those rumors yet. Anywhere, really? They they've been saying that forever. Oh, I can't remember the last team that relocated. Somebody old. Montreal. Tweet me. No. Wonder if they go to uh, Vegas, share a field with the Raiders again. I know the Senators are the Rangers now. I remember that, but they should go to like Oklahoma City or cool. uh, Nebraska, uh, Omaha, something like that. I think Oklahoma City has a pretty good minor league. Uh, so does uh, and the, and Nebraska does too. So yeah, get get. I think they would be really well supported. Oklahoma yeah. City, eighty niners. Well, we had the a, Midwest. Uh, we had a cool story yesterday, Josh, about a uh, team in Japan. Mm -hmm. They take the broken bats. Right. And they turn them into beer mugs. I've got some of those. Oh, so you have some? Yeah. Oh, is that in fact they got Mark one uh, oh, for, uh, for for Christmas? Do they do that in St. Louis? Huh. No, no, I, I ordered them online. So I just thought that was super cool. Yeah. Uh, so it, uh, that'd be a cool minor league promotion. How, how many bats break? I mean, did they? Oh, yeah, no, they. Every player in in the MLB has a good 
a good number of, I mean, at least six on hand. Oh. Wow. So, and ready to go. And not necessarily in the dugout at that time, but yeah. The equipment managers have a lot to <laughs> all around. Yeah, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, back to the sports page. But those bats are heavy, right? Man. Yeah, 32 ounces. Six times uh, how many guys in the bat? 40? 30 teams? Uh, man, I couldn't look Actually, that would be 32 inches. So Could 32 you, uh, inches by... Yeah. Could we move on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. They'd be on the wheels. A lot of math. Be, it's not 32 ounces. Awkward to carry, too. If oh, sure. oh, Stupid uh, world. No, it could be a 32 32. Oh. Yeah, you could be. You could 32 use that. 32. I think yeah. Dick Allen, uh, 36 34, I think. I think it was the biggest. That's bat a big ever. bat. Yeah. 36 34. I have big pants. I've been 32 <laughs> since like seventh grade. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> could we move on? Oh, sorry. We're just talking over here. You've forgotten the art of conversation, obviously. No, I haven't. I've, I've learned the art of boredom. Oh! <laughs> A man in Ireland broke the Guinness record for the largest collection of Deadpool memorabilia. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you just say we're trying to I, cut I, boredom? I know. I, I... <laughs> um, this gentleman's name, Gareth Peter Pellini. He knows. He knows somebody at Guinness. Has a collection of 2,250 <laughs> items that are all dedicated to Deadpool, the Marvel character. Cool. The record-breaking collection spans from magazines to rare pieces of merchandise and from a branded Monopoly game to Deadpool-branded Hot Wheels cars and, of course, action figures. He's attempted to kidnap Ryan Reynolds seven <laughs> times. <laughs> then my collection will be complete. Once I get Van Wilder, I can play. This guy's hey, more Ryan, of a, does more this smell like chloroform to you? Mm. Oh, what? It's more of a virgin than the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you think the Pope's a virgin, pal. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> People you can be, before you become, he, yeah, he probably know, had sex back in the day. Yeah, he said he did, actually. I think. Oh, yeah. He, he said he had a girlfriend. He said he did, actually. He had a girlfriend, right? He said he loved he reverse cowgirl. He did not cowgirl, say he had <laughs> sex, but he did say he had a girlfriend. <laughs> Check, yeah. smell on my finger. Come on, the man. Wow. Come on, the man. Yeah. Uh, this guy also says he owns a hand-painted life-size statue. Of Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? How about that? I've never even seen the movie. Is it any good? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, they're cool. Is like the guy's it. name Deadpool? It's yeah. It's Smiler. No, it's um, it's this giant body of water. That, yes, Stagnant, his name's yeah. Deadpool. He was a, a hitman, and he would go to a bar where right. everybody was betting on when he would die. They had a dead pool, and that's how he got his name, I believe. Okay. Isn't that a Paul Newman movie? That's the Drowning Pool? Drowning Pool. Oh, okay. There's right, a pool okay. in it. All right, very good, very good. What's coming up in sports? Uh, another world record, if you can, uh, if you can stand it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'll certainly look forward to that. Okay. Also, um, do you wear socks when you go to sleep? I do. I, don't. I, I have before, and I might again, but uh, not recently. And no. I, I wear sock on my bone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to sleep, it's like a, it's like a stocking cap. <laughs> so so in, who goes there? <laughs> <laughs> a sock and me with a candelabra. <laughs> in my head, the Venus was holding the candelabra. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it's own little one. <laughs> We're going to find out the relationship between wearing socks in bed and uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the um, intimate climax event known as the orgasm. Uh, <laughs> Nobody talks like you. Nobody. Uh, I don't know. If, if, if you're a therapist climax. listening, can you guess what? which one of us is sexually repressed? Oh, that it was might good. be Tom. Honey, did you intimately climax? <laughs> I was just trying to be uh, uh, yeah, and you uh, came less off. graphic. No, and, and you uh, came more... off as more of a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. sorry. Well, um, so we'll be talking about that coming up, as well as uh, the classic claw machine is in the news. Again. The claw. Uh, I've always loved, I have a love-hate relationship with them. <laughs> sure, <laughs> Because sure. no one ever wins. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> There's an expensive video game player in there. Sure looks dusty. <laughs> Wasn't there a wrestler that his move was the claw? Am I remember? Was it uh, George the Animal Steel? Was yeah, he the claw? The claw. I, I, it the sound, claw. That sounds right, yeah. Wasn't there a movie where the guy kept going, the claw? <laughs> uh, li and Liar Liar, Jim yeah, Carrey does yeah, it with his son. son, with yeah. his son. Uh, okay, uh, uh, right now I want to do a little quick quiz here. Um, uh, Christy Lee, what is your uh, sleep number setting, please? 40. Meaning what? Meaning it's kind of soft, I guess. Less than firm, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Chick McGee, on the other hand. 100, a very, very firm mattress, Tom. A sleep number setting of 100 means it is the firmest level of, uh, of firmness, if you will. And uh, the beauty of the sleep number bed is that you can adjust that 
Once you've got the bed at your house, you just uh, figure out what number you like, and let's replace it. Eight out of ten couples prefer a different mattress firmness, hence the need for the sleep number setting. This way, everybody is happy on that bed. By the way, they've also got things like um, ways to um, heat or cool you off when appropriate. The sleep number bed people have perfected the bed, and they know the importance of proven quality sleep. So check out the Sleep Number Bed by going to your Sleep Number store just around the corner somewhere. Find out where it is by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT show. And right now, Sleep Number has a very special event. You can save $600 on Sleep Number's most popular 360 smart bed. Plus, for a limited time, special financing is available subject to credit approval. Find it at the Sleep Number store, sleepnumber.com slash BT show. That's Sleep Number dot com slash bt show coming up we have our roombas we've got a pizza guy hero and more this is the bob and tom show hey guy it's kid tarmac this is bob and tom 24 7 kid tarmac hey ken tarmac i'm mark allison thanks so much for listening to the bob and tom show on a tuesday comedian drew lynch coming up he'll be at the improv in kansas city missouri coming up this thursday through saturday then sunday at the blue note in columbia missouri next week april 27th through sunday april 30th you can catch comedian drew lynch at helium in st louis missouri and he'll be joining us in the nine o'clock hour this morning right here on bob and tom 24 7 josh arnold back in the side sidekick chair after fishing with his family his brothers over the weekend and we'll continue to get more information about that and news from christy lee at the news desk all coming up next on bob and tom 24 7 hi everybody christy lee with your bob and tom entertainment news update new jersey governor phil murphy has declared september 23rd bruce springsteen day in his state that also happens to be bruce's birthday Murphy says the move recognizes Springsteen for his gift of music and for lending his time to causes close to his heart. Soundgarden and Chris Cornell's widow have reached an agreement that resolved her lawsuit against them. Vicki Cornell had sued Soundgarden in federal court in 2019 over seven songs Chris Cornell had made at his home studio in the months before his death in 2017. Vicky said they were for a solo album. Soundgarden said they were band recordings. The two sides have now issued a statement saying they've reached an agreement that will pave the way for fans to hear the final tunes. Details were not released. And Reba McIntyre will release a lifestyle book this fall called Not That Fancy, Simple Lessons on Living, Loving, Eating, and Dusting Off Your Boots. It will contain personal stories, photos, and more than 50 recipes from McIntyre's family and from her restaurant, Reba's Place, that comes out on October 10th, four days after Reba releases an album also called Not That Fancy. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Brigham All Broadcasting presents another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Beautiful Katarina Witt of East Germany became a household name in women's figure skating after her gold medal performance at the 1984 Winter Games in Sarajevo. Four years later at the Calgary Games, she successfully defended her title. 
Then, 10 years after that, in 1998, she posed naked in Playboy magazine, mm. a move which critics said severely tarnished her image and marketability. Men throughout the world were outraged. <laughs> if Katerina were going to pose nude, why had she not done it in 1988 when we were all fascinated by what she must look like without yeah. clothing? Yeah. To wait 10 years after her physical prime, when we had all clearly moved on to Nancy Kerrigan, <laughs> was a slap in the face to male fans everywhere and goes against the very spirit of the Olympic Games. Yes. Hello, Michelle Kwan, are you listening? Uh, <laughs> another and Tom Olympic moment uh, yeah. in history. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life, and I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. I'll tell you what I sound like when I make love to a woman. Yeah. I'm actually pretty bad at it. I call it making like. When I make like to a woman, I sound like a very scared man who's crossing a very thin sheet of ice. <laughs> and all he's trying to do is get to the side alive. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sounds something like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> I can do this. Oh, thank God that's over with. Oh, my God. I have to lay down. That's Woo! hot. Yeah, that's hot. Jeff oh, Rothban is our guest. Uh, <laughs> Jeff is a fine, fine comedian. I um, actually had to do that once. What? Be a pole bearer. And that, oh, my that's God. That's heavy. Yes, that's a heavy, heavy job. Yeah. I actually had to go to a funeral, and I was asked to be a pole bearer, <laughs> and I, uh, <laughs> always a pole bearer. <laughs> 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 Never the corpse. Never the corpse. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the uh, performance room. Hey, Chick McGee. There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. I can smell the throaty fullness of your cup of coffee right now, Josh. It's very good this morning. Very Incredibly good. robust, I'm guessing. Blessed to have it. There. There's Ace Cosby. <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, waiting for his joke of the day. He's got one. There's Willie Griswold. We're all blessed to have Josh back. I'm... <laughs> Thank you, Willie. Blessed Chick to be McGee, here. and here's... Here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much, Chick. Uh, coming up, we have uh, Hero Pizza Driver news. Okay. Uh, <laughs> with some just weird stories today. Uh, interesting news from the Reese's Pizza Camp. Yeah, you you'd Reese, been... Reese, Reese, Reese's, Reese's, Reese's Reese's? What, what is it, Josh? It's I, Reese's. Reese's PC. It's we not did. pizza. Uh, and but, they have pizza now? Uh, no, it's they've got something else interesting. Uh, oh, we've got pizza, we've got Reese's, <laughs> and all all different stories. You know, they have peanut butter cups now with Reese pieces inside them, and Krispy Kreme in the news coming up. Oh my goodness! I and know. they have a a, Re, a Reese cup with uh, pretzels inside. <laughs> why? Why? Uh, why? Why did my why, why did, did you mess with Reese's? Reese's? I don't care. Reese's. They had a Reese cup with. Yeah, uh, there the chips in there? The chips in the Reese's? Yes, the mm. potato chips. Tom. That's nice. What do you think they of that? Do? We'll have some Crunch. actual news about the Reese's coming up. Tom, one of your favorite movies, we were talking about The Claw Machine yep. earlier. And you were asking about, uh, didn't, wasn't there a movie where people said The Claw? And we named a couple. Toy Story? Toy Story. People are writing in. Oh, that's right. Also, the wrestler who had the famous Claw move, uh, Kerry Von Erich. Oh, uh, the, uh, that Von name's Eric, familiar, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so. Wasn't the Von Erich family Yes. Or something? Oh, yeah, they were a wrestling dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, Josh, we uh, were talking about the showering habits of Americans. Okay. Um, are most and, people doing it? Yeah, most people are. In fact, well, 85% prefer taking a shower over a bath. Uh, However, what, 20%, 15% like a bath? Yes. What, 15%. Daily? Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's no good. Um, yeah. Is there an age? I'm sorry, real quick, is there an age? Doesn't have an age. Okay. I'm sorry. 67% of those polled said they've showered with a significant other in the last year. In the last year? Right, yeah. Nice. They said that boosted their happiness, strengthened emotional intimacy. You know, Mother, that was very nice. Thank you. <laughs> oh, not that kind of. Uh, now, Josh, have you... Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And a regular shower or a bathtub shower? I've done both. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's, yeah. That bathtub shower, those things are dangerous, even solo, but with two people. <laughs> my God. I, I've... Uh, 
Is that what you're aiming at? <laughs> I don't With two people, especially when one of them's Josh, is that what you're? <laughs> no, no, that no, was no, the no, implication. Some yeah. underlying. Not at all. Was that underlying sounds like it was there, the implication. Yeah. No. Come on, honey. So that I, led I, us. Get in the bathtub, but Taft. The, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, the toilet water went down. What was it? No. That, <laughs> anyway, um, it's very. It's. I found it's kind of difficult to. Do anything in the shower, if you know what I mean. It can else. be, yeah. but it's re it's horrific foreplay. I, th I think if you got a if you got a seat, I think it's easier. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah. Total disagreement. I love it in the shower. The bathtub thing. One person can kind of Captain Morgan their leg up on the side of that, and then you can get easier access. And I love it for foreplay. You have to dry off, and then you're good to go. Well, yeah, it's really fun. That to... Captain Morgan really painted a picture. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> How else should I? Have really? Oh, no, it's beautiful. No, it's that's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. absolutely. But no. I don't know if you heard about this. That led us to talking about. Um, I was stunned that a lot of my women friends aren't wearing underwear anymore. Like, oh, really? Yeah, like stunned. I don't know how that came up, up during a, a dinner party they were having. or uh, I don't know if we were, I think it was drinks. I don't think it was dinner. Yeah, you know, I get drunk. <laughs> I like to talk. I'm not wearing panties. When women get together and start dr and the wine starts to flow, and they're worse than men. Oh, you know? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's wine 30. Yeah. <laughs> But I put up a poll on Twitter yesterday. I had about 1,200 votes. Uh, ladies, do you wear panties on a daily basis? 54.3% said yes. Okay. 457 said no. So okay. it's almost 50-50. But I have a couple of emails here. This is from Mandy. Hey, Christy, my parents, who are both physicians, wouldn't let my brothers or myself wear undergarments to bed when we were younger, even dressing us in gowns. Something about bacterial growth and infections. Hmm. Letting it air out. My mother always told me you shouldn't wear panties to bed. To let it air out. Oh. Let it all air out. Uh, did, your, did your mother say you shouldn't wear panties in the evenings anyway? No, just at night when I was sleeping. When and you were sleeping. Uh, let it air out. Makes my, sense. And this is... And by the way, that Mandy, yeah. she came and gave without taking. I want you to know. <laughs> Janie that. says her uh, great-grandma used to make her take off her underwear and sleep with no undies at night as well. So this is not something... That I just made up. No, I no. I was stunned when I told him about it. We thought you meant that just at night. You, you, you didn't say sleeping. You didn't say sleeping. Yesterday, yeah. you said my, you said that my mom told me not to wear panties at night. So at we night. thought you meant no. Oh, so like I after knew. dinner, you, you would know go. What I, was I knew about. what she was saying. After dinner, you would take your panties yeah. off. And you, <laughs> That's what, what I you thought. Think. You're, You're being involved. The werewolves are going to get her. You guys are. Pat's be... trying to make you feel better. No, by I thought that to you. too. You're a liar. No, you didn't. Dirty liar. No one said sleeping. What was your perception? Do you think that werewolves are going to get her if she's wearing underpants? What's the issue with the nighttime? At nighttime, you're just all balled up, and you're one of. I don't know. Air out. There's, I get, Well, well, this is kind of an interesting story. Wait, going, uh, don't uh, stick to one topic it, it kinda, here. It well, kind of makes sense no, because I wanted to get back to the shower thing with Josh. You, um, the uh, besides intimacy in the shower. The survey had a number of other uh, interesting things about uh, peeing in the shower. Thirty percent said they peed. Thirty-eight percent said they sang. 29% cried. 25% <laughs> blew their nose. Uh, the peeing, the, a lot of these seem low to me. I don't think everybody's being completely yeah. I think a lot of people but pee in the shower, the even women. The, here's the one that's the killer. Here it is. 12% of people claimed that they had pooped in the shower. Purposefully? <laughs> yeah. I find that very hard to believe. That's ridiculous. That seems that very high. That's awful. Way too that's high. one out of ten. If you're at a sports game, there's two freaks in your row. That's what that means. Shower. Yeah, time, time to do the waffle stump. Ugh. <laughs> How do you get rid of that thing? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't believe that. Well, my garbage disposal's out. Oh, in the kitchen? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. When you said yesterday that your mom told you not to wear panties at night, I thought you meant no. in the evenings you just doffed. No, Tom. Okay. Yeah, I, I would have said evening. Okay, I, I didn't right. think you meant the you bed either. Well, that, no, when you go to bed at night, you shouldn't wear them. Well, coming up, we have a new story about <laughs> why you should wear socks in well, bed. Should? We were yes. going to go. Wow. Do you want to wait and do it now? Well, yeah, because oh. we haven't finished sports, have we? Yeah, we have. 
No, we haven't. Oh. Stupid world. In everybody's defense, this has been a an erratic show. Yes. <laughs> you did the stupid world record. Remember that how? Means you're dead. Remember it how does. smoothly everything went yesterday? <laughs> yeah, and Friday. Not too. to mention Friday. Was, oh, what was the difference? Was the breeze? I can't put my finger on. It. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I'll gum up the works, Let baby. Let me talk to you, Josh. <laughs> it's your fault. You. I don't want to point fingers, but you, you're the problem. Okay, sorry. <laughs> A young boy in China has broken the Guinness World Record for the most... Don't ask me any questions. Don't. Just okay. play along. We'll all get out of here with our lives. The most soccer touches with alternating feet in one hour. All right. Yeah. Oh. Just the... There's a 10-year-old boy with the last name of Jin Fan, J-I-N-F-A-N. Mm -hmm. His first name is Tang. Hey! Does he have a sister? Like the orange drink. <laughs> Jin and Tang would His be sister's bad. name Poon. <laughs> Sorry. You guys really want to do that? No. And, and when he says he's sorry, do you, I, I don't believe him. Do you believe him? No. No. Never. Managed to juggle a soccer ball 8,147 times to earn the title in one hour. Wow. All right. Cool. So he's not juggling with his feet. The headline says juggling ball. Well, he's keeping the feet. ball presumably off the ground, right? Or oh, he is? He's he is? So he's like playing hacky sack with a soccer ball. Yeah. yeah. Wow. For an hour. Coordinated kid. Yeah, he's only 10. He's I mean, all the energy in the world. Kids, just know out there, you can accomplish so much if you put your mind to something and don't have a lot of friends to play soccer with. Yeah. You can really make it happen back there. That's right. I'm just glad he's not just making soccer balls in a factory. It's nice to hear about a kid it is. out yeah. there kicking it around. Good for him. And the last time we heard about uh, juggling in China, it was the scientist in that virology lab. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, we dropped one. Uh, tell everyone we ate bats. Me bad. <laughs> you drop the beaker with the red tape on it? Oh, no. Not that one. Still hanging on to that, huh? Okay. Well, well thank you. Back back. <laughs> is that sports? Yes, that is sports. Hey, Rocky, this is what you find them for. Wherever you go, whatever you do, always be a good sport. Christy? Back to our surveys. A recent survey shows 18% of those polled said they sleep in socks. Hmm. 18%? Yep. But this is why you should always change your socks before going to bed. Only 30% said they would change their socks. <laughs> a benefit of wearing clean socks in bed. A university study found you're more likely to orgasm with socks on than with bare feet. I simply don't understand. <laughs> You'll tell us? Um, well. There's something. Uh, it keeps your feet warm. <laughs> psychological that goes on with your feet being warm. That yeah. tells your body you're okay. Makes you or gotcha. Something. Keeps you at homeostasis and then you can... More comfortable? No, yeah, it, no, it yeah. tells your body you're okay. <laughs> Regulated? Then, uh, yeah, yeah. People who wear socks to sleep in wake up fewer times at night than those who sleep without socks. I couldn't do it. And those who slept in socks slept for 32 minutes more. I wear socks to bed every night. Hmm. Every night. I All love right. it. Slow down a second. So if you wear socks, you're going to have... Uh, Orgasm. <laughs> Easier. Yes. You, I, I, there may be something to that. You do feel more comfortable mm -hmm. and therefore freer to allow your body. And, and, and you're clear, this is on your feet, the socks. Well, of course. <laughs> not, you're not red hot they're chili not peppering it. Right? it. You're, you're, not, you're not red hot chili peppering it. <laughs> <laughs> Having a threesome, me, you, and my sock puppet, baby. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Oh, boy, there's a, yeah, a the sock, sock puppet. puppet in bed. That's going to be popping. <laughs> is that technically an H-day or a B-day? <laughs> I don't know, but cleanup's way easier. I wonder if this is more of a girl thing than a guy thing, My wearing socks full. to bed. Anybody here wear socks to bed? Every now and then, get some extra traction. I feel like traction. sometimes in the heat of the moment, I'll notice I'm traction. still wearing socks, and I feel like some sort of freak for still having those socks on. You mm -hmm. look weird. Being naked in just socks is a, the weirdest look there is. Even for a woman. You look like you escaped from a mental hospital if you're only wearing socks. Okay. What about um, uh, having nothing on but uh, shoes, socks, and pants down at your ankles? <laughs> that the, uh, <laughs> that's the Oxford Oxford style. Method? That, they used to call that Ivy League, but yeah, I think they used to be just called... call it Griswold yeah. style. Now. I, Ivy League style. <laughs> Ace, I disagree with you. I think socks create more slide. I, I think, think so, too. Um, 
A unless bare feet, got, I think, would have more traction. Unless you got rubber stuff on the bottom of your socks. Some of my socks do have rubber stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, that, that, yeah. Like the kinds you get at the, uh, at the yeah. trampoline oh, place? Yeah. What, what are you, 90? I <laughs> 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 can't go to sleep. I have my rubber pad socks on. Where don't, are they? Don't certain people wear uh, compression socks for certain medical issues that yes. help with circulation? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sex is a lot about circulation. Could that be part of this, that There's, it's just helping the blood get around? It's funny you'd bring that up. There's actually a goal that mentions the compression socks. Some people wear compression socks during the day right because then when they take them off it says uh, a university study found that wearing compression socks during the day prevents snoring because it prevents a buildup of fluid that travels up the body when the person is lying down hmm. weird that's, hmm. yeah that's odd hmm. those I've, I've had to wear compression socks years ago during mm -hmm. something and that those are rough they squeeze. Yeah, getting them on is hard yeah. when you're being squeezed all day. <laughs> I, I still question the study that <laughs> the that wearing socks is somehow going to change your sexual habits. Interesting. Um, what kind of socks do you wear? When you go to bed? Or Christy, do you wear do like, I... like, like Pete Maravich, the big baggy? <laughs> no, I don't wear <laughs> Pete Maravich socks. What, tube socks? Is that what they're called? <laughs> no, I just wear like um, a footie, you know, like a, a, like a no-show. No show. You know, I, I have to mention this here. Don't you have an odd uh, procedure with all of your socks oh, that yeah. you wear, Tom? Yeah, I guess. You guess. Yeah. I, you I, I, to I take a pair of scissors and cut off the top elastic. <laughs> yeah, that would drive me crazy. So they I, slouch all they, the time. They fray? <laughs> they must fray. fray. Yeah, they fray. <laughs> I don't care. How much? Uh, you just like a loose. I just like that loose feel. What are you paying for a pair of socks? Like 20 bucks? I have no really idea. Nice 20 bucks for a pair of socks. I'm just saying. He probably has very nice $20 yeah, socks. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I, I don't really you know. Just chop that. the tops off. Yeah. You, you do a gold toe, a nice gold toe? <laughs> What's a gold toe? That's a brand well, of socks. No, I have good no idea. I don't really care. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take a pair of scissors and get them, keep them how nice did, and loose. And you must did, really have hated the compression socks. How did yeah. this start? How stand. in God's name did this start that you said, you know what, I'm going to cut the top. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> I just <laughs> like them. I like them loose. Yeah, there you go. All right. It's got loosey, loosey, baby, <laughs> around the calf. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, Even when you wear shorts, on the rare occasion you wear shorts, <laughs> you have your socks on? Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have the ones that are professionally shortened. <laughs> you like your, your crew sock? Yes. Or, yeah. those you mean, uh, you mean the no-shows? You mean a no-show? Yeah, like whatever that. they are. Yeah. It's not that weird. A lot of people buy clothes and cut them up before they put them on. You, Larry the Cable Guy. There's a lot of guys doing this kind of thing. Sorry. Hmm. Fred and Barney. <laughs> Well, what was Fred? Fred wore the same thing, didn't he? <laughs> Gross people. Yeah. Barney did, too. It's very convenient, you'll find. Um, well, now, uh, so, Josh, uh, back to this uh, showering thing. Okay. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> um, do you sing in the shower? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Do you sing along with a radio or something, or do you just... It just Both. So Sometimes uh, I'll treat myself, and I'll get the Bluetooth in there, and... That's usually after uh, a day of yard work, something like that. It's what's been, your, what's it's your been go -to pointed tune? out that I always have to uh, listen to something when I'm in the shower. Really? Oh, really? I, yeah, and I do, I guess. I yeah. thought of it, yeah. Uh, I don't have a go-to. I just put on whatever uh, I'm feeling that day. So now, the one thing that grosses Christy out, sometimes called the hank. No, I hate it. Where you take a, a finger on the nostril. Right. And then you uh, blow out uh, the mucus. And, yeah. A big fan of that. I really? do it every day. Uh, in the shower. Yes, it's but I. Uh, but there, first yeah. off, I'm the only one that uses my shower. Okay. Also, uh, I uh, make sure that if I haven't been able to uh, do the, uh, you know, you fill my hands with water, drop it over the spot to get it all down the drain, I will actually Clorox wipe the, uh, that area. Gotcha. Yeah, so That's I make nice. sure that because... Right. You don't soccer style it to the drain? I will do that, but sometimes it doesn't always work. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes it's, uh, it's stubborn. So you're the only one that uses your shower, huh? Yeah. I mean, I have I have two bathrooms in my house, oh, okay. but I also live alone right now, so. Well, I, no, Josh, I know um, that. Back to the survey. <laughs> but... Have you ever taken a selfie? Have you ever taken a selfie in the shower? Uh, the closest I came was when I was talking to all of you on FaceTime one morning. 
uh, I was out of town and I was doing it. That, but otherwise, no, I have not yeah, taken 13% of Americans have allegedly done a selfie. I wonder what that's about. Show. Yeah, right? What would make uh, a person do that? Nudes? Sending nudes? Really? In the shower, though? Yeah. I wouldn't want my phone anywhere near the moisture. No. Go ahead. So you're ask you're more concerned about your phone than exposing. Yeah, I don't get it. I thought that. you uh, called us one day on the toilet, too, or something. Or you took a picture of you on the toilet. I may have done that. Yeah. Because remember, yeah. his point, he was showing us how the window faces right. out toward the that's street. That's right. right. Yes. Have you ever had an alcoholic beverage while showing? Showering. Yes, I like. I used to really enjoy a shower yeah, beer. One in five Americans have done that. And mm -hmm. go ahead, ask him. Oh, I know. I, well, you're not part of the twelve percent of people who claim they have actually defecated in the shower. No. I'm not. Have you had a snack in the shower? I've not, I have not done that. <laughs> I don't. Uh, what's what's a what's a shower appropriate snack? I don't know. I was, I was thinking about it. A yeah. clementine yeah. would be nice and refreshing in the shower. Yeah, and you know what? You you have mentioned that before. That's not bad. And yeah, I think that when you good too. peel it open, I think the steam of the water and that whatever that just the, the citrus revealing yeah. itself into Absolutely. the air yeah. that'd be nice. It would open up your sinuses. That's again. good. Yeah. yeah. Again, one in five Americans have had a snack in the shower. Have you? I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I, no. like, what would, chips? It's, <laughs> it's either foods that don't oh, my get, taco got wet. It's yeah. foods that don't get soggy or foods that can be soggy. Or so melting, like, a, like a, a popsicle. Or like an Italian beef would be good. Oh, a French dip God. would be good. How about a bowl of cereal? Bowl oh. of Cheerios. How about that? I don't know. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, coming up. How about we, another person? We, we have a, a pizza guy <laughs> that is a hero. We have a Roomba on the loose. And uh, stand back. Cookie Donuts. Oh, my God. It's what are coming. they doing? Is that right? Uh, yeah, this is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. Now, what kind of vacations do you get? I mean, since you travel so much, Jim, I would yes. imagine that... A vacation, a vacation would be, would be staying home. home. Yes. I know last summer you had your... You went camping. Your a semi-disastrous camping, camping experience. You know, it's the, my wife, I married this woman who loves to camp, and I'm <laughs> indoorsy. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, she always brings up, camping's a tradition in my family. I'm like, hey, it was a tradition in everyone's family till we came up with the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My parents never took me camping. You know why? Because they loved me. <laughs> Yeah. If it's so great outside, why are all the bugs trying to get in my house? <laughs> How true. Oh, I'm with you on that. Happy camper. <laughs> Has anyone ever really been a happy camper? Because whenever we use that term, we're being sarcastic. Yeah. He is not a happy camper. <laughs> well, why don't we just call him a camper? He's miserable. You know who's a happy camper? The guy leaving the campsite. <laughs> He's the happiest yeah. camper. He gets to take a shower. Yeah. It's a camping <laughs> thing. Camping. Are you a shower man versus a bathtub man? I, I am a, I'm a neither. I'd rather do nothing. Yeah, just lay in no, bed. The, sh the shower, yeah, definitely. The bath thing, that seems like a lot of work. It does. That just seems, um, I don't know. You have I'm to just, wait. Yeah, it's just you got to, then you got to figure out, you got to stand up. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's like once I'm standing, I don't want to have to, you know, uh, sit down and then stand again. I'm that lazy. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> chick's like... Really you are polite. talking my language. I never talking. thought of that before. And when you stand up out of a bath, yeah. don't you have all the suds on you too? Yeah. You're sitting in all yeah. that. <laughs> then you got to go take a shower to clean yeah. up. Then you have then to you rinse off. Take a shower. I don't understand that. And they're slippery. You, you, old people get themselves broken hips all the time in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate they're bathtub showers more than anything. Relaxing. No, yeah. They're not. No. Yes, they are. Well, not for me. Men want to primarily do physics experiments involving flatulence. <laughs> You know, yeah. basic stuff. Oh, yeah. It really does bubble. How about that? <laughs> Hold a match to the surface of the water, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> I would have never thought of that. <laughs> you know, I've not thought of that either. Uh, this is the first show now in a long time. Now you're going to want to take a bath. I have to take a bath to see if it works I have to take notes. Oh, you guys big, don't take baths fun. with your significant right, remember. others? Well, um, sure. I mean, I've done that. See? Not if you want them to stay your significant <laughs> others. <laughs> Honey, let's take a bath. Uh... uh <laughs> Why don't you do that? I got you got sports there. <laughs> you know what? You know what Christy wants? She wants a bubble bath. And some sodomy. That's a good Whoa! Uh, whoa. No, no. Ding, ding! Oh.
mean, see, we have to explain. You have to be very careful what you say and it's taken out of context. Family friendly show. That doesn't oh, work. No. See, people right. don't realize that chick, uh, Christy didn't actually say that. Chick it's some sodomy. Well, who is that then? <laughs> no, but I mean, she said it in a different we context. We were talking about something totally different. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have it on tape. Isolated. They, just, you just keep playing it, right? Yes. I, I don't know what you're talking Do you see me moving? Christy, what do you want some for sodomy. Christmas? <laughs> No, well, no. Now, Jim, now you're playing. I want some no, nice... don't play Chrissy the game. Chrissy wants some perfume. And some sodomy. <laughs> okay, uh, wow. Uh, uh, Do I have to come over there? I'm not feeling well. All right. That true. won't be on the TV show. No, no. 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 <laughs>
world. I see you. <laughs> you know, when Drew Hastings came up to me one time out of the clear blue sky, we were just saying hi before a show. He looked, he came up to me and he goes, I gonna get you. <laughs> I, I thought I would, I never stopped laughing. I, what the hell's wrong with him? He kaboos one of the greatest games of oh, all time. Oh, a little kid with a little baby? Well, sure. <laughs> Hilarious. I mean, we have object permanence, so yes. it's not as interesting to us. But uh, <laughs> but I think that we found that if my dad can't see something, it doesn't exist. That's true. That's why he gets really, he gets real into peekaboo. Yeah, a couple of uh, minor victories for me at this new house I'm moving into. Oh, here we yeah. go. This will be interesting. Well, it's about time you start having some victories. Oh, I, I, mostly defeats, let, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, he hasn't been around. He's moved into this <laughs> yeah. place a don't, little bit. Terrific. Don't, tell him the vent story. Not, it's not done. What? The vent story. He fell into a vent. I didn't fall all the way in. <laughs> well, I wouldn't think so. I was going to say it's a big vent. <laughs> but no, no, listen listen to how it's, none of this is his fault. Right. Well, when you have he a, stepped one into those, an open vent, those floor vents, you know, the size of a shoebox. Yeah. And there was one in the middle of the floor in this closet. It was dark, and I stepped it. I almost killed myself. One in the middle of the floor. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? That's in the middle. Was it normally near the wall? Yeah. Friday. Hey, look, but I, you know, there's sort of been a, a piece of wood or, or some maybe some yellow police tape or what something about around that. I was going to talk. One of the victories. Uh, yes. At, at, uh, I used to have at my old house all of the, all of the plates. We're right there, out where you can see them. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're back to object permanence. By yes. Way. He fell into an art piece on Friday. He tripped going into the bathroom. Oh, it's because the light didn't Bang know where the head. light was. Oh. Oh, Once yeah, again, there was that. Not his fault. Be careful. So what is your Take victory? Your you have all your plates Some of the plates are actually in a place where you can see them on a shelf. And some of them is a handful of glasses. So... You, they're they're right there. You don't have to you don't have to pull open a drawer to get them. Oh, well, there. congratulations. That's what I like. What about your clothes? Are they all unlike? Oh well, yeah, you had those little uh, cubbies at your. Yeah, house. do you have I, that in your I, new I, place? I, I, I haven't worked that out yet, but so far so uh, good. I okay, okay. Oh, we're we're doing just fine. You okay. deserve some victories. You've uh, you've waited a long time. You've signed a lot of checks. You've made a lot of sacrifices. Got a urinal. You do? Yes. Where in the garage? Are you in the main house? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's got a. I've got a urinal in my in, bathroom. In the main right. house. Oh, nice. Pretty and cool. You, you know that you. That's yours. That's mine. No one else in that house. <laughs> yeah. <you're laughs> you're up to your necks and women. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great, huh? All right. Is there a guest room for you, Willie? I I do not know. Haven't yeah. been there yet. I don't know. I haven't been there. <laughs> and what's uh, once again, Willie? What's your relationship? I'm his son, Willie. We just moved in and uh, Friday, and Willie was invited uh, Sunday. Couldn't make it. Is your shower working yet? Uh, no, no, shut up, would you please? <laughs> oh, okay. So no, no working no shower. shower right now. That's no all right. Water yet. Where are you showering? No, day by water. day. There's a shower upstairs that works. Oh, okay. Good. Good. No, I just didn't feel like climbing the stairs this morning. At Let me ask you. Uh, do you, um, you guys have um, separate bedrooms? No. Huh? Mm -hmm. oh, got a great bedroom. Okay. Very excited. Separate bathrooms. This is uh, just a no. It's kind of like a Jack and Jill thing. Ah. There's a, uh, she has this sort of sink area. Uh huh. And then I have a similar sink area, although significantly oh. smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was that she had a, a sink area and you went tumbling. Because he falls a lot in the new house? Oh. Which has nothing. <laughs> I'm going to leave. <laughs> no, no. Don't fall. Oh, stay. Stay. <laughs> uh, yes. It, 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 it's it's going to take some time. <laughs> finding, yeah. the, finding the light switches is always tricky well, in a course. new house. Have you ever fallen down the stairs? Oh, there's nothing like that, huh? No. When you I was don't a kid, do that. when I was a kid, I think I fell down the stairs like once a week. We all, one of us, because I have three yes. brothers, we were, one, yes, at least once a week, one of us fell. Are you down. Always. <laughs> yes. I was don't it, know what happened. We were just not, being. We were in a hurry and not paying attention. Yep. We were kids. Actually, was ever, I was wearing socks without treads on the bottom, yeah. <laughs> slipping and falling. Yeah. Yeah. Were you ever chasing or pay, playing bobsled during the Winter Olympics, having fun? Yeah, I broke my collarbone going down the stairs in the sleeping bag. So Ooh. fun. Ooh. Hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was fun, but it hurt after You know, that. it doesn't take much pressure to break your collarbone. Mm -hmm. like Who knew the clavicle was so uh, breakable? Well, I I'm sorry. It's time now to uh, move forward with uh, with Christy Lee at the uh, Bob and Tom News Desk. What have we missed? A high-speed chase through Middletown P Township in Pennsylvania was brought to an abrupt end when a pizza delivery driver tripped the suspect. According to Brookhaven Police... Officers were pursuing a stolen vehicle when it crashed in a residential neighborhood and the suspect got out of the car to flee. Uh, Tyler Morell of Coco's Pizza... The mushroom! ...delivering pizza in the area <laughs> when he saw the commotion. He told WPVI... 
Um, we're almost PBR, but not quite. I started walking towards the road, but I couldn't do anything with my hands because I'm holding the pizza. Sure. So I just stuck my leg out. Really? Or I was able to trip the suspect, causing the man to tumble to the ground, allowing police to catch up and take him into custody. After lend, uh, leading a foot, lending a foot rather to police, Morell was able to deliver the pizza safely. It's a great video. See this guy... <laughs> I'm like I'm the whatever the pavement uh, it was holding this pizza box mm -hmm. in his hand mm -hmm. and he's looking around and obviously the cops are chasing this guy mm -hmm. he just sticks his leg out and the guy goes flying <laughs> yeah, you know what the guy said oh, I, when I get out it's your ass man <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's uh, looking for you pizza boy most police officers do say please don't do anything like this yes but we will handle it but exactly. that, uh, I mean, it, it happens though. in an it's it happens in an instant I would see I would be yeah there's not a lot of yeah. what's going it's just he boom. walks out there. Oh, look, boom. Gets well, Wouldn't you be inclined to, to put your leg out? No, you're supposed to call uh, your nearest uh, police station or the FBI. You're not supposed to do anything. No, the police were already chasing, chasing him. I'm just guy. telling you, you're not supposed to do anything like that. Just hey, what's your away. phone number? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I need to call you. <laughs> hey, you guys are still... Keep going. You're doing a great job. I'd be inclined to trip the person. It's pretty funny that he doesn't drop the pizza either. Right. Kind of heroic, that's, really. That is... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. Has he thought about going into law enforcement? Uh, I don't know. Uh, see, this is what happened. Then you got vigilantes with pizzas everywhere. <laughs> tripping. <laughs> tripping people. Is that what you want? Charles Brunson. <laughs> Death wish. Seven. <laughs> this time it's personal pan. You know, Jeff Goldblum's Come one on, of the that's funny. in the original Death Wish. <laughs> Jeff, yeah. He, 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 if you hadn't picked on me, I'd be laughing my ass off. Pat. <laughs> I thought it was Josh. Shut line. up. <laughs> it's going to be a great morning. Okay, Pat, is it time for a song? No. You have a song? No. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's Definitely. right. Definitely not. Oh. Yeah. I'd say wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what's coming up in the news, Christy? Help. Well, coming up, we have Krispy Kreme in the news with cookie donuts. They sure do good work over there. Reese's creamy or crunchy peanut butter. We'll have talk about they that. They sure do good work over there. Creamy. Reese's. Lady almost lost her finger um, as her acrylic nail got stuck in a toilet. What? Yeah, I had to really look this up because I Did could she not drop her figure it out. Ring or something? No, 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 no. Boy, no, that no. nail it's, was on, huh? It's the one of the push buttons on the top. Yes. With flusher. The nail thing. got in between there. Yeah. I think I think those nails are on now. You got to cut them off. They're man. bad. I mean, yeah. they are stuck. They're stuck on there. Yeah, but How about that? stuck on you. Yeah. Well, if her, if her nails are that long, what else gets stuck during the wiping process? <laughs> Gross. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Here's a toothbrush with it just to <laughs> root out the underside. You know what? As crazy as you are, I have to agree with that. <laughs> you can't not get some of that under your nails. Like, yeah. Ma'am, you're having trouble typing. Yeah. How do you... yeah. I don't get it either, but... There are a couple of unfortunate fashion fads out there right now. Mm. The what? shaved side of the man's head and the uh, uh, and long nails are two of them. <laughs> uh, and the shelf-like eyelashes are another one. What about Shelf-like what, what, eyelashes. What's the problem... Uh, with the uh, shaved uh, head on the sides. What's oh, nothing. Just look up Hitler Youth and you'll find out why. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you on our YouTube channel. some practice every night he played around too with some blind that he saw at the bar and the fly of the tiger was unzipped once again <laughs> and he thought no one would be the wiser he had plenty of women some were skeezers and hoes who all had their eye on the fly of the, the tiger. tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Back at home. 
Thanksgiving night. Tiger saw her unravel. His wife, Elin, a cute little blonde who you'd figure could not her to fly. But the fly of the tiger is right where she aimed. She took one mighty swing with his driver. She missed his crutch, but hit his tag Heuer watch. She laughed as she watched time fly <laughs> off the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> so was Accenture. Gillette cut him quickly. It turned ugly when Nike pulled out. They took his hat and his shoes and his balls. <laughs> yes, the fly of the tiger has cost them a lot. But for Tiger, there's a silver lining. He's got a new sponsor, it's Danny's Restaurants. They're always open, just like the fly <laughs> of the tiger. <laughs> 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 in your life treat yourself you deserve it at bob and tom store.com hi everybody christy lee with your bob and tom news update it's tax day and the irs says it has answered two million more calls this tax filing season than a year ago with the average phone wait time now at four minutes down considerably from 27 minutes this time last year the federal tax administrator is promoting its improved customer service and giving credit to a big boost in funding pushed through Congress last year. Additionally, the agency served 100,000 more taxpayers in person and digitized 80 times more paper forms than in 2022. A federal appeals court has overturned Berkeley, California's first-in-the-nation ban on natural gas in new construction, agreeing with restaurant owners who argued the city bypassed federal energy regulations when it approved the ordinance, the measure which took effect in 2020, to cheers from environmentalists who intended to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases, of course, that contribute to global warming, with some exceptions, though, it banned new residential and commercial buildings from installing natural gas piping in favor of electrical lines. And Northern Light enthusiasts have gotten a surprise mixed in with the green band of light dancing in the Alaska skies. A light baby blue spiral resembling a galaxy appeared amid the aurora for a few minutes. The cause, simply excess fuel that had been released from a SpaceX rocket that launched from California about three hours before the spiral appeared. The appearance of the swirl was caught in time lapse on the Geophysical Institute's All Sky Camera and then shared worldwide. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I was just a coin star. <laughs> Were you laughing at the people you think are below you? No, no. First of all, those there are only about four of those in the city. I, <laughs> I thought they were in every grocery yes, store. They, uh, they, they don't are. have them. They at, are. They don't have them at the grocery stores. My dad. <laughs> I, don't have a store. I don't think they have them at Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah. They have them at, at Whole Foods, they have a coin star, but it's for bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bravo. Bravo. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Before we go, yeah, thought I'd tell you the true story of Susie Suzuki and Sam Samford. Now, this is the true story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. As told by yours truly... Tom, Tom Whiskey, Whiskey, your doctor. Yeah, good morning. Well, I never will forget it. Susie Suzuki had to get married at a very young age. Yeah. Uh, she was impregnated by her husband, Hyaston. She never really liked Hyaston, but they had 12 children. You know, Hyaston up and died, and Susie remarried. Uh-huh. Um, I'll tell you, it was really something because she married her true love, Sam Samurai. Oh, touching. Yep. With Sam, she had 12 more children. 
Wow. <laughs> well, finally, after many okay. years, Susie died. I wonder why. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I was standing right next to her at the funeral home. Well, next to her, her body. Mm -hmm. Two little old ladies were staring down at Susie with tears in their eyes. And the first little old lady said, well, <laughs> they're finally together. Second little old lady said, who, Susie and her first husband? Or, or Susie and Sam Samurai? No, neither. Her legs. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Hey, Pat. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. There he is at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Got that uh, joke of the day waking. There's Willie Griswold. Chick Stir. I'm Chick McGee, and here is Tom Griswold. Thank you very much, Chick. Now, uh, we have uh, Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. Um, also, uh, uh, coming up today, uh, news stories about um, uh, the real lightsaber. We were talking a little bit about some of the uh, Disney uh, stuff earlier and the Star Wars stuff. We have a um, an actual lightsaber that has been unveiled by Disney coming up in the news. But first, Christy, what do you got over there? Well, first we're going to talk about donuts. Krispy Kreme is teaming up with Chips Ahoy and Oreo to create a collection of cookie donuts. Krispy Kreme's new Cookie Blast collection features several new flavors. The Oreo and Chips Ahoy Cookie Blast Donut the Chips Ahoy Candy Blast Donut, <laughs> the Chips Ahoy Cookie Dough Cream Donut. Oh, do they have one that has the insulin right in the donut? Do they have <laughs> and the Oreo Cookies and Cream Filled Donut. Oh, boy. The new flavors are currently available for a limited time at participating Krispy Kreme. How do I not uh, drive right there after yeah, the show? These will have to be uh, oh, fried. I do, I do not do that. It sounds delicious. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's, it's, just, it's the unbaked cookie dough inside of donuts? I have no idea how they're doing this, Willie. I'm. Mm. It's a lot of sugar. That's how I see it. Oh, my doctor's texting me. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Josh, what if he just forgot to put the U and he was writing donut to encourage oh. you to go get some? I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> this you is know, the. Doctors have bad handwriting, so. <laughs> this is the uh, what Keep is it, it called? Text. The uh, the oh the turducken of desserts, if you will. It's sure. Oh yeah. What is I'm trying to remember? The turducken is what the the duck is stuffed inside the turkey, chicken and the duck, duck and the turkey. Okay, okay. The, okay. Isn't there a game hen? Oh, there's a game hen. Game hen and the somewhere. duck, duck and the turkey. Yeah. Okay, but this is this is donuts with the chips ahoy and the Oreos inside the donut. Yes. Remember there was a cronut croissant. Sure. Cronut, oh yeah, donut. that remember was big that? And what what was the, the uh, pie cake? The thing called you. We were talking about that one morning too. A pie cakin. It's a pie. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Pie I remember cake hearing about that. Yeah. And you could order them from a particular restaurant that has. Uh, yeah. Apparently oh. they're great. Mm. Well, they do sound good. A cookie filled donut. We will get them. We'll have to try one. I think. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, Reese's what else is going on? Is releasing limited edition creamy and crunchy peanut butter cups. Reese's is yes. To let fans declare which peanut butter is truly supreme. What do you mean? From now until May seventeenth, Chick the candy brand don't change anything. Is calling Reese. on peanut butter lovers to enter the nationwide debate. You're asked to try both the limited edition. Reese's Creamy and Crunchy Peanut Butter Cups before heading over to Hersheyland.com slash Creamy versus Crunchy and casting your vote. Hey, I'd like to go to Hersheyland. You got, uh, <laughs> you got the Wilhelm scream over there? Hey, we went, uh, we went to Hersheyland is what we did. Oh, my God. Well, relax, relax. Reese's will announce America's favorite peanut butter on May 18th. Chris, uh, Chick, I think you're right. This is not, this is a made-up debate. Yeah. On uh, National I Love Reese's. Peanut yeah. butter cups, no matter what you call them, they're pretty darn good. <laughs> right, yeah. right. It's crunchy versus smooth. But you want well, smooth in your peanut butter cup. Yeah, yes. Chris, Christy's right yeah. here. This is uh, this Come is not on. an actual debate that's going on. And if crunchy wins, they're not going to switch over, are they? No, they no. Not. Well, well, first of all, it won't win. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it won't win. I heard that the voting machines that the crunchy people are using are rigged. <laughs> See, here's the problem we're all having right you now. Get sued? No, no, here's the, here's the problem where every one of us, you sat us down, I don't know how long ago, yeah. and said, look, hey. we're going to 
stay away from some of these uh, topics. Bartle Romo over there says they were rigged. Yeah. So we're just going to have fun with stupid stuff. We're going to be goofy. Well, I don't want to be Mark Russell. Hey, I know look, Pat does it. I do not. To me, that is very silly and goofy to claim that the Reese is voting. First off, that we'd have to go somewhere and vote using a machine. No, it's just, I think this country, we need to find more things to be divided about right now. <laughs> right, right. God forbid Americans find something we can agree on. I don't think we're going to have to worry too much. As of April 18th, Creamy remains the favorite in 43 states, with Crunch preferred by those in Wyoming, Idaho, Delaware, and Vermont. Well, what about California and Texas? Because the Electoral College is going to screw this whole thing up. <laughs> True. By the way, Montana split right down the middle. They go either way. Oh, all right. Yeah. Montana slit? What? Split. Oh, split. Yeah. Have they ever made uh, the, the Reese's Cups in the shape of each of the states? Well, that'd Not be that fun. I know of. They don't do that, but they do, uh, you know, they do the little eggs around sure. Easter. Sure. Wouldn't you? On Christmas. Yeah, the Pumpkins. problem is, though, wouldn't you always go for Texas over yeah. Rhode Island? <laughs> way more in Texas. Yeah. Well, I, no, I think they could do it in such a way that it wouldn't necessarily be able to, you could put was, them together to make a map. Right. They'd all be of equal weight. But a joke. And yeah. then you would have the ability <laughs> to take a, really a Josh, let me, or hear or me or out on this, Josh. Yeah. So then you could take, say, an Idaho. Now we're right, way down And the road. take that panhandle and really <laughs> shove it back in there and crunch it off or take your Florida and, you know, snap what would be the most satisfying Reese's Cup state shape? It's gotta, be te- gotta be Texas. You think so? Because you got different handles? Yeah, Florida. Florida would be good. <laughs> what Christ- if you're not on the VIP to see what Christy just did. <laughs> did Christy just go down on a Florida? Yeah. 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 He sure did. Yeah, with the, did. the broomstick motion, right? She in had all, all of Jacksonville in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> all the way down to Miami oh, Beach. Yeah. She went Miami to Jacksonville. Well, it appeared. <laughs> wow. Go down to the Keys. <laughs> No, I just, it's just kind of silly. I just think it's fun. and uh, It is fun. Uh, I haven't, I see, we have to get some of these to try them. Yes, yes, immediately. I am not a fan of crunchy peanut butter. However. We should try the ones that are out there right now to make sure we like them still. In a yes. candy, in a candy, that might be a different story. Yeah, oh. exa- it might work very well. No, you're the big peanut butter and jelly guy, right, Josh? I am, yeah, I'm mostly a smooth. Yeah, I can't stand crunchy peanut butter. I, I can it. stand it, but I, I prefer creamy, yeah. Didn't we have some peanut butter cups here that had a different kind of filling in it? They were Pretzel, kind of, uh, one, because remember was I was it? I was biting it. And I was, yeah, what the hell, the hell is, is it? Yeah. It wasn't bad. I just wasn't expecting right. anything crunchy yeah. in there. That's how good Reese, Reese cups are. Reese's, you, you hill you, jack. Huh? You, can, uh, <laughs> you can put anything in there with it, and it's fine. It's yeah. still great. Well, I don't know about any. Have you ever had the... Reese cups? There's a brand out there that has the peanut butter and jelly cups. Oh, the mallow cup or something. I think, is that it? Well, no, that has marshmallow peanut in it. Peanut butter and jelly Do those not work? That sounds like it would work great. Yeah, smooth- uh, they uh, don't work. A smoothie no. cup? Is that what it's called? Smoothie? You want to talk candy? <laughs> oh, boy. Let's talk, let's talk candy. <laughs> they have the Reese's Cup stuffed with Reese's Pieces. That's the Reese's, pretty cool. Reese's, you illiterate jacket. <laughs> I prefer Hill Jack. But, uh, you know what's a fun snack? You take a raspberry and you put a Reese PC inside of it. A raspberry? Yeah, no. man. That little no. hole in the raspberry, you shove it in there. It is no. a texture wonder. It is delicious. It's That's like a, interesting. It's that like a, is what? interesting. It's like a Boy, peanut butter and jelly pot, in you? your mouth. Dude, I get so high. It's crazy. <laughs> that would be like a peanut butter and jelly. It's you, a lot of fun. You will eat anything when you're high. <laughs> Some, okay. Dude, somebody has to do it. I wake okay. up every morning and I do experiments. Did you invent that? Yeah, I did. I do it for the American people. Is what I do. How the hell? So you had raspberries and Reese's pieces, <laughs> Reese's pieces in the same area, yeah. and you went. Let's just find out. Mm-hmm. So wait a minute. What's the recipe again? You just take a raspberry, you put a Reese PC inside of the raspberry, and you eat it. You get the nice texture of the raspberry. You bite into the crust. That is fascinating. It's a that peanut is. butter and jelly in your mouth. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. With the bonus of the chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I'm going to go on record and say raspberry artificial flavoring better than actual raspberries. Have mm. you noticed that? When you go to eat a raspberry and you think, oh, this is going to taste like a raspberry flavored something. Right. Yeah, sometimes they're sour. Well, there are, there's not oh, I, that much sugar in the r- raw raspberries. I think the organic raspberries are a lot better than the blueberries. You Give get a bugs. better raspberry. All organic food has bugs. Oh, <laughs> Josh is very Look anti bug. Okay, uh, changing the subject, got a quick letter. I was listening to one of your old shows. You were talking about the time that Tom was walking by his old house and a squirrel fell out of a tree and almost landed on him. <laughs> now, Scared it, him to death. Well, it, and it, it was way up. 
and this squirrel drops right in front of me, and <laughs> it just it is completely still. And I figured, dead. Yeah, it was this wasn't thing that high. It fell was, a long way. Shouldn't have been scared. Then the squirrel does one of those cartoon things where they wake up and go, <laughs> and, he, and he runs off. Didn't happen. He goes. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, from Matt in Idaho. He goes. The exact same thing happened to me walking on a trail with my wife. A raccoon almost dropped on her head. What? It hit the ground, let out a squeak, and was perfectly still. Oh. We thought for sure it was dead. Oh, no. Then it sprang back to life and ran off, scared the crap out of us. Hmm. Well, you're very welcome, Matt. I'm glad someone has seen a similar thing. Wow. Anybody ever hit a deer with their car? They think it's dead, and you walk out, all of a sudden the deer looks up and takes off? No, <laughs> Gives you the finger that. and runs off? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, so that'll happen. I don't know what that is. Ugh. They get they get stunned. Uh, now, uh, Christy, can you give me the teaser? Well, coming up, we do have a woman who almost lost her finger in a toilet. We have a Roomba that escaped. We have a pet parent survey, another survey. If you're a pet parent, you're going to want to listen up. My fur babies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kid that yeah. got stuck in a claw machine. Oh, yeah. A yeah. Claw. Uh, and a new a species of frogs. Well, how about that? A new species of frog. Mm -hmm. well, that's good oh. news. Actually, five new species. Is it a talking frog? <laughs> we'll find out. Oh. Hello, it could my baby. Be. Hello, my It, it Hello, might be a prince. Brother. You don't know. <laughs> By wire. One of the great cartoons of all time. Sure. Absolutely. Oh, Michigan J. Frog? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Just genius, genius. Right now, uh, Josh has been doing some work in his house with a friend. It's now called Angie, formerly Angie's List. And uh, how does this work, Josh? Well, you go to Angie.com or you can check out the Angie app. That's A N G I. And you can find out everything you need to find out when it comes to home repairs because Angie is your home for everything home. Angie doesn't just get your home projects done. Angie gets them done well. Angie, your personal home expert, has served 150 million consumers to date with over 220,000 pros in their network. It's easy to research, compare, and hire pros to ensure a job done well, which is why I love Angie and I am using them. I had to get some roofing done, so I went on to Angie. With just a few taps in the app, I was able to set up a project with some wonderful pros. And by the way, one of the great things about Angie, Angie has projects that are priced up front and clearly lays out the cost before you buy. That was huge for me. Nothing like getting a project done and they go, hey, by the way, that price we gave you, eh, it's a little more than you, than you know, we uh -huh. said. Oh, what is this? Not with Angie. No. The pros on there let you know there are no shocks, no surprises when the bill is there. And Angie can help you with anything you need done around the house. In fact, hundreds of projects from small repairs to major remodels. Angie is my go-to for anything I need to get done around the house. Angie can tackle your home service project from start to finish or... Maybe you're just thinking about getting something done. I know I go on there every now and again and go, huh, I wonder how much it would be for me to get stacked stone around my fireplace, something I really do want to get done. You can research, connect with local pros for any specific project. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, Angie. Coming back with some, uh, some interesting stuff in the news and a little surprise. Also, uh, comedian Drew Lynch will be joining us this morning, I believe, right here in the studio. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Don't, 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 don't. part of the team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar, peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it type two peanut goo. But... <laughs> yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 11.30 at night. You shoved the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think he ate the rubber band that holds a legend on it. I mean, come on. My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go out the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. Okay, these kids, 
They spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a Jif sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with nutter butters all over their face. It's a She's all about mystery. She's a mystery girl. No one knows what she does. She says she doesn't have a job, but she drives a Ferrari and she lives in the nicest part of town. She's a mystery girl. No one knows what she does. She's always getting text messages right in the middle of our dates she has to go somewhere right away she's a mystery girl <laughs> and then she pays her bill all in singles <laughs> Single. she comes home really late in the evening says she's not in the mood for love and she got rug burns on her knees she's a mystery girl no one knows where she's been once I found these weird fuzzy handcuffs in the top drawer of her dresser. She got a tattoo that says something that you can't say on the radio, but she's a mystery girl. All right, here's the bridge. She told me she was a virgin, but somehow mysteriously, she gave me every kind of VD you can name. <laughs> oh, oh, the pain of the mystery girl. She's a mystery girl. And every time I call her up, her voicemail says, Felicia can't come <laughs> through the phone. <laughs> but she told me her name was Lisa. <laughs> She's a mystery girl. Was Henry Felicia? Phillips. Stop the nerve gas attack by the mean Russian man. <laughs> Jack is hiding in the ductwork, crawling around. <laughs> then it pops up, pulls his gun, shouting, everybody down. <laughs> Jack is just trying to keep America free. But tell him a lie, and he'll shoot your wife right in the knee. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the intel, no matter the cost. He gonna give the witness to that German dude who was on loss. <laughs> Jack and said, Chloe, I'll blow them schematics to my PDA. Gonna put my jacket hood on, hold my breath, and save the day. Jack and said, Oh yeah, life goes on. Long after they set off the nerve gas bomb. <laughs> oh yeah, I said, life goes on. Long after Michelle, Tony, and Edgar are gone. Little Diddy, about Jack Bauer's plan. Gonna whisper, then shout some, then whisper again. <laughs> Curtis, where are you? Tell me about Mr. Cooper. Tell me about <laughs> Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Get in the chopper now. I said I wanted a cheeseburger! <laughs> This is Bob and Tom 24 7. Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Christy Lee. Hi. 
at the uh, performance room, it's uh, Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. Hey, there's Josh Arnold. Hello there. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Hey, Tom. Uh, we have uh, a number of things happening at the same time. I'll try to pay attention here. Uh, Christy Lee is right next to me. She yep. is at the uh, Bob and Tom News Desk. What do you got over there? <laughs> a new survey of pet parents reveals some of the surprising things we do for our furry friends. According to the poll from PetSafe, six out of ten pet parents reported they would rather snuggle up with their pets than with their partners at the end of a long day. Mm-hmm. Okay. 78% admitted that they have a hard time saying no to their pets. I do. S- me too. Seven out of ten said they believe their cats and dogs live like royalty. I do. <laughs> 52% take their pets on vacation every time they go. No. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and 62% of pet owners said they confide in their pets when they had a bad day. <laughs> Uh, Nobody understands me, Scruffles. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets me. Hello, Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Bob and Tom, it's Donnie Baker. Hey, Donnie. Donnie. I'll say it like this. You know me, I don't judge, but I understand why more people would rather snuggle with their pets in their side piece. I totally get it. Why? Our little rescue peppy, he eats his own pee pregler and still has better morning breath than Angel Skinner. Oh, <laughs> <Swear to> God. <laughs> I never could figure out what she was gargling that made her breath smell like that. But pets are great. They don't snore, okay? They don't steal your blankets or Cadillac converter. They don't um, bang your idiot cousin Lonnie for payback because you may have tagged their sister and they can't prove it. And then pets don't get mad when you don't call them the next day neither. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Pets ain't going to go through your phone the second you fall asleep, and your dog ain't reading all your t- texts, lying, saying they're just playing angry birds, and going through pics and waking you up all mad because they found him nudes of their stepmom she sent you, you know? Uh-huh. And the best part of sleeping with your dog and not her, there ain't never a wet spot to work around. I swear oh, to God. Well. Good point. Yeah, nothing worse than tossing and turning in your sleep saying, no whammies, no whammies, you know? (laughs) That's the only reason I think chicks love to snuggle up so much. They don't have to sleep in the mess they made. Hmm. I swear to God. (laughs) I'd better hop off here. Well, if he's trying to make s'mores in the toaster again, hang on. Now you've got to lay the toaster down sideways. (laughs) Take that. You take that ring pop off your finger. Don't look at me. You stop acting like your mother. (laughs) Very, very, very helpful. Yeah. Uh, So uh, pet owners would rather snuggle with their pets? You don't let your pet up in bed with you, No, no. The dogs are not allowed on the bed. What about the couch, chair, anything? You snuggle with them ever. Oh, snuggle with them. Yeah, sure, but not on the... You know, I don't like them on the... They're one one of my former dogs, most sadly. What, what are they now? They're deceased. Oh, okay. Uh, Miss Winnie, would, she was the only one allowed on the furniture. Okay. Well. The other ones looked at her like, bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think so. Oh. Do you guys look at the other dogs now and go, see, look what happened to Winnie. She sat on the furniture. <laughs> Keep it up. See what happened. Yeah. <laughs> hey, chick, do you let your dogs on the furniture? Unless they're, uh, not unless they're invited. Yeah, that's but, right. But they can, but they have, have to wait for your say-so. I yep. say okay and stuff like that. They know they it's by invitation you? only? Yes, yeah. they do know, yes. I see, I the see. The little one's a little, uh, she's getting there, though. Are they crated when you get out of the house or no, when you're they, gone? They have a room they go to. Oh, I, th- I thought they would be partying on the couch That's doing everything they can't do. Full of, uh, I I would have before, but the little one I have now uh, is very oral. Mm. She loves to chew stuff, which is backing off a little bit. So. What's in her room? Do they have a, a couch? Bed, giant beds, and oh. like four beds. Oh, cool. PlayStation. Yeah. PlayStation. <laughs> Hot tub. <laughs> they got a dorm fridge. TV. Yeah. They watch Dad on TV. YouTube. They're huge on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would watch two dogs in a room chicks, on Twitch. Chicks dogs. <laughs> yes. look, look that up. Chicks dogs. That's mine. Yeah. I see. Yep. I see. Uh, do do uh, your pets have pets? <laughs> well, that's about you. You gave me that advice. The best thing you can get a dog is another dog. Yeah. Takes a while sometimes. <laughs> yeah. My two are just now trying to get along, and that's been two years. Okay. I tried that, but it didn't work. It didn't? Yeah, my cat seemed lonely, so I got her a mouse. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't end well. <laughs> mouse killed my cat. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> Big mouth. <laughs> Uh, it says, uh, what, 78% admitted that they have a hard time saying no to their pets? Yeah. Oh. I do. I do. She really? begs for yeah, my dinner get on the and bed. I'll give her it's some okay. of it. Just say no. She doesn't even know what no means. You can say no. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it for you. And then give it to her. <laughs> or she'll wake me up at 2.30 a.m. wanting pets. And Tom, I, have, you I seen, pet her. have you seen the video of the cat? The, the owner of the cat is deaf. And the cat's owner, the cat figures it out and starts using sign language. No. It's, be, it's, it's one of the most beautiful things you'll ever it's, see. I, even you would watch it and start Aww. crying. Yeah, it's, it's very sweet. Just amazing. Aww. Well, you know, I haven't seen it. I'll have to I'll have a look forward to watching it. Well, thank you very much. Now, uh, we uh, return with Christy Lee to the news desk. What else is happening? A 13-year-old boy had to be rescued after he climbed inside a claw machine at a North Carolina Amusement park. Boy, 13. I've seen in person, I saw like a four-year-old in one of those. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, they wow. had to get the fire department out. Courtney Weber, a spokesperson for Carowinds Amusement Park. How said, you doing? <laughs> the boy became trapped inside the Cosmic XL bonus game after he crawled inside to score a prize. The machine contained uh, various plush prizes. She said medical response team unlocked the machine and the boy was able to get out. Ms. Weber said the boy has been banned from the park for one year for attempted theft. Oh, good. Again, what, 13 years old. That's... Yeah. that's... He's a, have you seen the picture? I mean, he's a good-sized kid. And that's a big uh, claw machine there. Yeah. They have those giant ones, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's, but it's for a plush toy. It's mm -hmm. not like there's a PlayStation in there. Well, really. yeah, what are you... Uh, what are like a, yeah, what, what are, are you, you inferring? Like a VR headset? Maybe he had a girlfriend he was trying to impress. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I wasn't paying attention. How many quarters did it take the fire department to get him out? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they get him on the claw. You think they the come cat. in with an axe and break the whole thing? That'd be kind of cool. Just... When I saw they just kind of opened up, they were able to open it up somehow. They they didn't have to damage the machine. Huh. Yeah, they well, they gotta... would have to open it to put prizes in it, mm -hmm. right? No, Boy, they... she was crying bad, oh. the little girl I saw. <laughs> But you couldn't hear her cries through the... <laughs> oh. So she looked like she was in some sort of exhibit at like a weird orphan museum. She looks like, Ma like Magneto in that glass cage to contain him. <laughs> All right. Hang on a second. Who wants to go to the orphan museum? Yeah, not, not a weird orphan museum, just... <laughs> the orphan museum on its own is weird. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, we call them annies, is what we call them. <laughs> the orphans. I gotta admit, I hate those claw machines. Why? Why? Well, you have a love-hate relationship. Because you them. never win. I no, dude. Be, I've my, seen people win. Yeah. The uh, Todd Boner and Donnie's band. That guy can slay a claw machine. You want, the, the key is to go for the. Uh, you don't go for the one you want. You have to go for the one that's most available. You know, ah, the easiest. Yeah. I I mean, when a, you win, is a thrill. It is. Yeah. A, and there's there's risk involved. If you want to put your quarter in and get something guaranteed, go to a vending machine. This is a fun game. Machine. We're having a good time. Yeah. I like you position your brother on the left or right of the machine. Then they can see the lo the longitude while you see the latitude. Good strategy. Oh, oh, that's good. That is a smart move. Uh, in any event, this uh, 13 year old kid stuck inside the claw machine. <laughs> How much I, money have you spent on one of those in, in in a day to get somebody? One of your kids a prize, specifically Willie. Oh, dude, we would get the 20s flowing like nothing. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. 20s. Baby. Get a little tear up about the divorce. Here we go. Give me that 20. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, help yes. me, uh, Daddy, I, can I play the claw machine? I told you, I, I famously uh, was at, uh, what was the name of that place? Boomers, in, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale. And um, oh, we won the gigantic teddy bear. The teddy bear. I mean, the one that's like seven feet tall. Out of a claw machine? No, it was. Uh, it, it was. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. I think it was just the biggest prize you could get. It's like a cash in your ticket situation. Uh, oh, okay. And there's there was one. There was some way that you could w win fifty thousand tickets or whatever. Right. And I think Charlie is the one that won it. Wow. And uh, the the prize was so big, <laughs> uh, and I was I had to leave that day. And uh, I can remember <laughs> we could barely fit it in my rental car. <laughs> How awesome. I took it back to the hotel and I said to the guy, look, <laughs> there's a seven-foot teddy bear in my car. If I bring it here, will you mail it to me? And uh, they did. 
They did. Yes. Wow. It wasn't cheap. Now, do they know that you had kids? <laughs> <laughs> did they wrap it in, like, clear plastic and just stick it in the mail, or did it come in a big box? It was in a huge box, and it was in wow. it was in Charlie's room for years. Oh, dude, I bet you guys lost your minds when you had that. I truly don't remember it. I don't know. Oh, okay. It was huge. Hmm. Just wrestle oh. it and... Yeah, but maybe learn about your body. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> learn about the teddy bear. Body. Tear a hole. And in by it the somewhere. way, um, a tip to uh, a fellow uh, Chuck E. Cheese attendees. Oh, this will be uh, not helpful. At this all. is extremely helpful. <laughs> You're going to thank me. Here we go. Uh, they have the best price on pitchers in town. I love Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you can only buy one, two pitchers at a time. Mm -hmm. I think. Seven dollar pitchers, you can't beat that. Which is a rip. That's a good price. Uh, I've the, got twenty bucks. I want twenty bucks worth of pitchers. Okay. <laughs> the, the, and by the way, you can't exchange the ticket you win for pitchers. If you are uh, at Chuck E. Cheese after the kids have been there for a while, they win points. Yeah. Used to be tickets. Now it's just these point things. In any event, uh, then they line up for the prizes. Right. And I, my contention is the toughest job in town is those young folks behind the counter trying to help these kids decide what to get. The patience. It yeah. takes, it's just brutal. Are you kidding me? They're 17. Give them a jewel and an Adderall. They'll give you whatever you want. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> My point is you can buy. You can bypass the problem. Oh my God. And pay the difference. Really? Your kids have to learn what? at some point. <laughs> we didn't have this. They don't get difference. everything they want. In my administration, we did not have this. <laughs> he, he, he thinks this is a tip for all parents he out this there. Is a good idea. <laughs> oh, look. The, the cotton candy is 400 points. Yeah. If you've got a seven year old with 80 screaming seven year olds around you, mm -hmm. and you realize that you're 25 points short of the cotton candy, you can say, hey, "Can I actually?" Mm. And then for a buck seventy-five, you got the cotton candy. Day's done. You're out of the building. Must be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That was it. Was it was a cheap payoff and well worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the kids up, right? I felt like I felt like BB Rebozo back in the late sixties with Nixon. <laughs> we can take care of this. Who's that? <laughs> that Nixon's there's no, there's no reason you would know. <laughs> I barely know what it is. So. I'm just saying, it's a tip if you're a Chuck E. Cheese and you want to get out of there. And be, and be a horrible parent. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That's a tough gig. All yes. Those, all those kids screaming. Oh. And they, boy, yeah. You get the, you can see in their faces. And the too. good prizes. You know, they, like I said Your earlier, scooters, your... Uh, yeah, the cool yeah. stuff is very dusty up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because no one's ever been able to win it. All right. Uh, Christy, what else is happening? Speaking of cool things, Disney has debuted a so-called real lightsaber at an exhibition last month. So far, 42 people killed. <laughs> Man. Disney Parks chairman Josh DeMauro was giving a presentation. DeMauro, DeMauro. <laughs> Josh DeMauro. He brandished a lightsaber hilt, pressed a button, and triggered a very real-looking blue lightsaber blade <laughs> to spring up from the hilt. <laughs> New handheld nice. prop <laughs> looks like a real lightsaber, complete with a retractable glowing blade. Damaro explained he was holding one of the lightsabers used on board Disney's Galactic Star Cruiser experience. I wonder what it is. I don't know. Can you buy these or are they just for that? Uh, the video is... Trade secret. Fantastic. Because, because they're still physically impossible, right? You can't get light to stop light. Well, they do. I don't know how... It, the video's taken from, it looks like, 80 feet away... And he walks out there, looks like he's got a flashlight on his hand, and he presses the button, and the, it, the, the light goes, whatever, three feet away and stops. And you can't see anything where the light... That's I, awesome. I, I, and I don't know if there's a... If like there's some tube. Kind of thing up there, yeah, who knows? Those Disney Imag Imagineers, yes, they are. Uh, they're pretty good. So, yes. yeah, who knows? When Whoa. I was a kid, the technology was okay. It was. It would just kind of come out like those bats that cops have, and it was oh, right, right. Yeah, the and telescoping. Man, you could if you whacked your brother with that enough time, oh, yeah. the light inside it would stop working. Or, yeah. But you yeah. can still whack them pretty good if the light doesn't work. I used to like you'd go to stab them and it wouldn't collapse. It would, oh. Oh! <laughs> so funny. <laughs> well, this is appears to be a light, not a an actual extension. Are you looking at it, Chris? That's yeah, crazy. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find if you can buy one. 
Wow. Apparently not. This is apparently the part of uh, the new uh, exhibit they're going to have. Let's not. They, sh they sure look cool. Yeah. Let's not sell these until we know. I that think gonna... uh, America needs these lightsabers, I think. Uh, I just found on the, the Disney page, it says, this lightsaber won't be on sale for the public, but will likely be used by actors of the Disney parks. There okay. you go. Would you guys uh, be okay with getting rid of the presidential debates as we know them <laughs> and uh, the two candidates have to lightsaber fight? Yes. And the winner, yep. uh, well, the, the winner isn't automatically president, but certainly would go up in the polls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think we should take this one step farther. I think their cabinet members should have a karaoke contest. <laughs> I think there should be some sort of baking contest. Yes. Can we make it fun again? Yeah. Can we have the slap fight I, that the UFC is America. doing? America. I think the karaoke thing is funniest. Oh, Can man. Can you imagine? Because, first of all, the, the selection of the songs would be so controversial. Oh, that's funny. Yes. That would be, people would be furious. But oh, yeah. I can't believe they let Biden have my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all just want to sing my way. <laughs> I, I, this, is, this, is, this is the kind of, this is the fix. The fix is in. <laughs> Back God, in the that USSR. Is, like, <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, these, uh, these lightsabers look absolutely real. Now, he doesn't cut anything, so presumably it doesn't have the... Yeah, he's just standing there. Thank goodness. If that thing can cut, we're in trouble. Boy, but yeah. it comes out just like in the movie. That's pretty cool. I bet the crowd went I bet, audible gasps. I bet. Bunch of nerds. Yes. How do they <laughs> nerds crying? <laughs> they've done it. It's so they. I live to see it. They've it's done the it. same color as. So how do they get too. the? How do they get the light to stop? Exactly. I have no idea. That there's was always a, the thing. There's a uh, stopping uh, gap there at the top. Boy, it'd be hard not to yell, I see your Schwartz is as big as mine, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> From Spaceballs. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, coming up in the that? news, Christy. No. Coming up in the news, we have a woman who almost loses a finger after getting an acrylic nail stuck in a toilet. It's finger. A Roomba escapes in a nail salon. I'm out of here. A new army of <laughs> Must frogs. vacuum. I will vacuum the and world. <laughs> <laughs> My baby! <laughs> and archaeologists have found a cool statue. We'll talk about that. So they say. There's yeah. no way you well, can check you know. up on them. Uh, well, they, well, this is the Beelzebub uh, Magnificent that uh, has been missing for 90,000 years. They found the Beelzebub Magnificent? <laughs> for 90 million thousand hundred years. Juan know? Ponce de Leon was looking for that. He could never find it. I still want to go to the Orphan Museum. <laughs> that is such a weird idea. Uh, right now, it's, just, it's quiz time. It's quiz time hundred. once again. Hundred. Hundred is what? My sleep number, my sleep number for my sleep number bed. It's a very firm mattress, Tom. Very, That's very firm. That's right. Uh, Christy Lee, your sleep number setting is what? Is of uh, 40, so it's, it's much not, different than chicks. Not want to come in today, man. What are we talking about? <sighs> well, the fact that eight out of ten couples prefer a different mattress firmness. So when you go to the mattress store and you pick out that mattress, then what if you get home and you go, this really isn't what I wanted. This is uh, either too soft. This or isn't what I wanted. All right, firm. well, here's, go get something you want then. Well, to avoid that unpleasant discussion oh. or a... A, uh, or a, a Goldilocks and the Three Bears incident, Sleep Number invented a bed that has adjustable firmness and it's different on either side. So you can have 100 over here and 40 over here and everybody's happy. Is your partner snoring? Sleep Number may have a solution for that too with a flex fit smart adjustable base. You can raise your partner's head at the touch of a button to help alleviate that problem. Also, there are temperature things they got going. They've got it all at the Sleep Number store. You'll find Find the store by going to sleepnumber.com slash BT show. One reason to find the store today is because you can save $600 on Sleep Number's most popular 360 smart bed. Plus, special financing is available for a limited time, subject to credit, appro uh, credit approval. Excuse me. Uh, get the details at sleepnumber.com. That's sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number. Very important. It'll help every other aspect of your life if you're getting the right kind of sleep. And everybody's happy with the Sleep Number bed. Sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Coming up, a Roomba on the loose. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob. If you want to uh, create a sex act oh, of I some sort, because there's a whole, well, there's a whole bunch of them. They're out kind there. of internet sex acts. Yeah, I don't I, think they really are sex acts. Yeah, I don't know if there's anyone uh, out there. Don't do that. 
Uh, with yeah. with doing the dirty Sanchez. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, that they are my, what is it, might the, be out there uh, What is much. it, the Puerto Rican taco punch? What is it again? The, uh, That's what? a good one. Why don't you add that in there? Uh, what's, what's Puerto the one Rican taco punch. No, Bob's, Bob's got the song. Bob, there's, Bob did all the research. There's a, no, there's a lot. There's Bob, the Bob Alabama, got his Nobel on this song. The uh, Alabama Hot Pocket. The Alabama Hot Pocket. It's Shanghai my, Surprise. My favorite. So when I found out what it was, I was... I really thought about pulling it from the song. It's so disgusting. Oh, I don't want to <laughs> the Alabama hot pot. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's um, not good. But we, oh, now, do you remember the formula here? You take you take the city you were born in, and then chick. What do you add? Uh, your favorite uh, kitchen utensil or or candy bar or candy, or candy bar. bar. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dear Bob and Tom, I was born in Walnut Creek, California. Sounds like a Walnut great place. Creek. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a kid, my favorite candy was Fun Dip. Oh yeah. Fun dip. The Walnut know. Creek Fun Dip. I don't know what those are. It's what like a stick, and it comes oh, with a powder, seen, and you stick that? the oh, candy Oh, like Pixie stick. Sticks only. Well, uh, no, it's like a like a popsicle stick. Oh, and the stick. stick is made out of sugar? Yes, yeah. and you lick it and dick it and lick it and... Oh, boy. <laughs> you lick it? I'm sorry. Freud's Way in the off. phone. <laughs> they, heard, they heard that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Freud was calling. Doc, <laughs> doc, doc, Dr. Freud... <laughs> Spending free hot dog Fridays. <laughs> Essential morning radio. All day and all night. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. Yeah, it is. Hey, thanks a lot for tuning in this morning. We got a great comedian coming up in the 9 o'clock hour. His name, Drew Lynch, and he'll be appearing at the Improv in Kansas City, Missouri, coming up this Thursday through Saturday. Then Sunday, April 23rd, Drew Lynch live at the Blue Note in Columbia, Missouri. Then he'll be at Helium in St. Louis, Missouri, coming up next Thursday through Sunday, April 27th through April 30th. Again, Helium in St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. That's comedian Drew Lynch, and he'll be joining us in the 9 o'clock hour. By the way, DrewLynch.com. That's L-Y-N-C-H. DrewLynch.com if you want to know more about him and his comedy tour. And you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7 on a Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News Update. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy has declared September 23rd Bruce Springsteen Day in his state. That also happens to be Bruce's birthday. Murphy says the move recognizes Springsteen for his gift of music and for lending his time to causes close to his heart. Soundgarden and Chris Cornell's widow have reached an agreement that resolved her lawsuit against them. Vicki Cornell had sued Soundgarden in federal court in 2019 over seven songs Chris Cornell had made at his home studio in the months before his death in 2017. Vicky said they were for a solo album. Soundgarden said they were band recordings. The two sides have now issued a statement saying they've reached an agreement that will pave the way for fans to hear the final tunes. Details were not released. And Reba McIntyre will release a lifestyle book this fall called Not That Fancy, Simple Lessons on Living, Loving, Eating, and Dusting Off Your Boots. It will contain personal stories, photos, and more than 50 recipes from McIntyre's family and from her restaurant, Reba's Place, That comes out on October 10th, four days after Reba releases an album also called Not That Fancy. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, Shooter, it's Kenny Tarmac. Hey, we just landed. I'm an ORD just got in from TPA through ATL. And hey, guess what else just landed? The Bob and Tom app. I know, I know. Now, thanks to the Bob and Tom app, even if I have to go all the way from Foxtrot 20 down to Alpha 4, I can still listen live, see their videos, find an affiliate station, use the alarm, and even send a message. This is Kenny Tarmac signing off and reminding you everything I touch turns to sold. Good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. It's time now for another exciting episode. Oh, no. Of, of Murray Whiskey, Frontier Funeral Director. Oh, no. My hero. In this episode, Murray Whiskey has just gotten married. Hmm. And he brings his beautiful new wife to their honeymoon room, their suite. Mm-hmm. And they're getting undressed on their wedding night there. 
Mary Whiskey drops his trousers, throws them over to his new little bride, just put those on. She looks at him incredulously. She says, go ahead, put them on. She puts on the trousers. She says, they're too big. I, I can't wear these. Mary Whiskey says, that's right. Remember that. I wear the pants in this family. Don't you ever forget that. She says, fine. She takes off her panties. She throws them over to Mary Whiskey. She says, you put those on. He tries. She says, you made me do it. You've got to do it. He says, okay. So he tries to get them on. Can't do it. He says, I can't even get these past my thighs. He says, I can't get into these panties. She says, yeah, and until you change your attitude, you're not going to either, partner. <laughs> That's your tale from the Old West. That concludes another exciting episode. Uh, Murray, Murray Whiskey, Murray Whiskey. <laughs> frontier, frontier pyromaniac idiot. over here. What are you? You're lighting up the studio. Yeah, this thing, it's not working. Uh, I'm sorry. Nothing. Uh, just... Brought to you by that new Japanese Jewish restaurant, Sosumi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Murray. <laughs> hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24/7. Well, what else would you be doing with your time? And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Bob and Tom 24-7. It's not on air. It's online. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Chick. There's Willie Griswold. What is going on, my friend? Hey, man. I'm Chick, and here's Tom Griswold. If you're just joining us, uh, we had a suggestion earlier this morning from an astute listener. Uh, to create a little something. Uh, and uh, we uh, took that advice and have the following uh, new piece for you. Mr. Fister! Oh! <laughs> There you go. A little bit of Mr. Fister and the famous Wilhelm scream uh, back in the news. But right now we turn to our news desk and it's Christy Lee. A woman says she nearly lost her finger after her acrylic nail became stuck in a toilet flusher. Miss <laughs> Manuela Ferrario had stumbled while flushing a toilet, which caused her freshly manicured fingernail to get caught. It was uh. one of those ones on the top that have the buttons that you push. The 26-year-old detailed her or ordeal on Instagram with a video showing workers removing the tank lid to get at the flusher with pliers. <laughs> Someone in the background of the video can be heard saying, if it doesn't come out, we'll cut off the finger. What do you think? Wow. They were able to get it what out. What a freak accident. Yeah. Hmm. I hope she was able to flush it. <sighs> oh. I mean, if you're the workers trying to get it out, you don't want to walk in and there's two, you know, corn-laden floaters. Oh my God, <laughs> That's what you think. That's so gross. The corn-laden floater sounds like a jug band. Uh, <laughs> how long? Left my girl. When you heard the term turd in a punch bowl, how long did you laugh? <laughs> if you have nails like that, there's just got to be a little thing in your purse that you can carry, and it's like a little stick, I guess, with a good grip so you can use it to kind of well, function in society, right? Those little pointer fingers that comes in, they're in like the kid's... Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a little pointer finger on a stick like, coming in, like, the kid's school. What? Let's play school, and you can point to the chalkboard. And <laughs> right, like, you right, know what I'm talking right. about? Thank you. Yeah, the you nails, thing, that the, the, the nails they've gotten too long. <laughs> it is very trendy to have I mean, very long nails, yes. I mean, can you imagine if you had a time machine, and you took someone with these ridiculously long nails back in time? The, the 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 people would they 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 think it was a monster they'd kill it. They I bet long nails have been around for centuries. Exactly, mm -hmm. people that play in bluegrass bands, uh, well, cocaine it's, dealers. It, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> see it's one thing if, if if you have nails for a, playing an instrument. It's something else. And we did. Yeah. I like them. Because I like uh, getting my back scratched and my scalp nice. scratched. It's like, oh, look at those back scratches. You worry about what's underneath those nails. I don't. I figure they they've got it worked out. Where they can wipe. Have a nice just nail fine. brush, I'm sure. 
Hey, Lucia, if you're going to the can, if it's a deuce, I got the uh, special toothbrush so you can get the underside of those babies. Oh, they were special nail the brush. Brush. <laughs> <laughs> Lucia. <laughs> Lucia. Lucia. I don't know That's who Lucia is. Mine. <laughs> Threw the name out. Uh, so this lady gets it caught in the toilet. and uh, Yeah. Did her nail survive the ordeal? I don't know. That's rough. You would think, hey, hey, remove the nail, not the finger. Well, but the acrylic nails, you can't just pop them off. Oh, no. You they have to go are, get them taken off oftentimes. I mean. That's how they get you. They used soap and water <laughs> eventually, and they, they were able to get her finger no. out. No. So I'm not your, making that up. What's Read your take the on the super long fingernails, Christy? I'm not a fan. But I yours are a good length. You can get some good scratching done, but they're yeah. uh, completely functional. Yeah. I almost, I almost, uh, when I see, uh, think of a girl with long fingernails, I see her chewing gum trying to press the keys on yeah. the keyboard. <laughs> hey, Mister Winslow. Yes, uh, you have a call on three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. I said, hold on. Uh, I say, oh, I had Mister Winslow as Michael Winslow. <laughs> <laughs> What's up his ass? I don't have acrylic nails either, but I did once. That was well, what are those I, ceramic? Uh, no, it's, I don't know. You got the granite? Yeah, granite, that's it. Isn't it, uh... Really heavy. I don't know. It just, it just seems to me to make the statement, I can't do anything of a practical nature. <laughs> I know my niece has really long ones, and watching her try to text is so funny to me. It's like, but you how know, do you do that? You know, Tom, some people without nails, without the long nails, would say that about you. What's that? You can't do anything of a practical nature. <laughs> Like conduct commerce or I mean, leave I your I had or... to put air in my tires yesterday afternoon. I can do that with nails. You probably can't air do it without puncturing. Air in your puncturing. tires? Why'd you put air in your tires? Because the thing on the dashboard told me to do it. No, no. just do a reset. It's the, it's the it got cold after being warm. No, no. You got there. Was, I think no. I've got a nail in my left it's front. Hey, I need a new car alarm. Next time you do that, can you record yourself <laughs> bending over and putting your knee on the concrete? Because that's got to be a hilarious noise. Yeah, it hurt. Okay, Aww, I'm sorry. That's uh, Speaking of a nail salon, a Roomba escaped from a Michigan nail salon. The Macomb Daily reports that Jenny Wynn, owner of AJ Nails and Spa in St. Clair Shores, discovered her autonomous robotic vacuum, motored out of the salon's front door she had propped open for the day, let in some nice out. fresh air. I'm free! <laughs> Wynn's friend Lindsay Melton posted about the escaped vacuum on Facebook and asked residents to keep an eye out for the Roomba. <laughs> 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 Have you seen this Roomba? <laughs> Spotted the wandering Roomba and returned it to the nail salon where Melton picked it up and brought it home. The Roomba had died after being left out in the rain, but Melton said she dried it out in her basement. She said at first it was spitting dirt and wood chips everywhere, so it had, had to be cleaned out, but then it was as good as new. Hey, Someone left, left the, the Roomba <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> oh, nice. Never have that It's Josh, I, I love the intermittent humming you did before a recipe when the words were somewhere lost. Where do you, where do you think the Roomba went first? The I liquor, don't know. liquor store? No, uh, the dispensary. Oh, the Jack. The dispensary. Do you have an oh. ID? He lifts up an ID and it's a Roomba with a fake mustache. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm also an that, organ donor. I have some of that vodka up there, and uh, you know where the whores are? Give us a massage, please. <laughs> Your massage table is dirty. <laughs> Height, four inches. And I thought I sucked. <laughs> this would be a this would be oh. a good commercial for something. Oh, yeah. Where the, the loose Roomba? The Roomba escapes yeah. and goes... Uh, uh, Maybe it goes uh, like to uh, a candy factory uh, no. and uh, sucks Are, up candy because it's it's delicious. See that? You? That would be sweet. No, Maybe not. it terrorizes the dogs in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Just taunting them. Yeah. Are you, is your life out of control? The is robot it? leaves. So, uh, you need. Did you see a guy with a room bar on a leash? <laughs> Christy, Roomba on a leash is so damn funny. That's funny. That would be funny. Uh, oh, well. Picking up little piles of dirt behind it <laughs> with their baggies. Oh, we're on to something here. Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> we, should, we should not do this on the air anymore. Yeah. yeah. People steal We've got it. an ad here. No. Maybe it's a Bob and Tom show ad. The Roomba. What, it escapes? Yeah. What well, goes to a place where there's a better... Uh, Reception? Better, better radio. <laughs> right. Well, that doesn't exist. They're playing a crappy show over there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah, that's... Uh, 
now, you don't you don't like the Roomba, is that correct, John? I I've never had one, but no, I have to assume that. Uh, well, it ran over three Cheerios and a <laughs> ball of hair. It's filled. <laughs> it's All it's in a really hard work. to figure yeah. out how to clean them out. It's like to get the to get them open and d dump all that. They're stuff. great for yeah. pet hair. The vacuuming isn't that hard. No, it's not. It's very this, simple. This, this, it just cruises around. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. It doesn't do it in a fa It doesn't go and it back and forth for in an orderly manner. No. It goes wherever it wants. And it takes forever. You got to yeah, no, no, close no. off the kitchen. You don't have to watch so it. I would I would want to watch it like that thing on a computer a computer <laughs> monitor that just bounces around and you want to wait until it gets into the corner. <laughs> like, oh, the Roomba's going to make it to the corner! Fast forward to next week. Uh, well, my Roomba got loose. <laughs> I fell on it. Uh, it's filled with gravel. <laughs> you wanted to be a street cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be That's a street cleaner. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then, it, then my neighbor yelled at it and said, hey, I'm on a break, bitch. And that caused a problem. No. <laughs> yeah, oh, I got that guy. That's awkward for everybody. Coming up, comedian Drew Lynch is going to join us. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got a comment? Our email is Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com. More Bob and Tom next. State law. Uh, a lion. Mm -hmm. I've always said, what, I don't. A lion? I would love. No, I, I know this is crazy <laughs> that I thought about this. What? Now? I would never go into the wilderness and get an, and, and have a lion because they they belong. I, right. You know, That's where they belong. But if somebody like uh, maybe they worked at the zoo and there was a lion and 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 it had to live in a house, but it had to be sedated all the time. And How I could about squeeze raised from it? a cub. I raised from a cub. I <laughs> yes. know you. And I would love a lion. Why? Just they're so cute. I would just bite them all the time. <laughs> their face. That They'll, little they bite back. Believe, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, their dogs. Teeth are big. Mm -hmm. Nick has raised a very interesting point. What? Which is uh, the essence of it, I think you said. Just because you like something, you don't have to have it. Well, I've always been, you know, somewhat uh, controlled by my finances. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of stuff that even if I did want, I couldn't have. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I, I literally, and I'm, uh, I I have panic attacks. Well, I'll, I'll I'll get done with the workout, and I go, I want to go get one of those really nice, like, $6 smoothies. And I'll think about it for, like, uh, can I, uh, do I, should I treat myself? <laughs> it, uh, am I worth Yes. Oh, I, I, You're I worth it. six bucks. You know what yeah. says, says something? You think... <laughs> I think in my head I'm probably the only one doing this. Right. I was at um, uh, a, 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 a Whole Foods, Whole Foods, mm -hmm. and they had these like expensive lemonades. I don't know how to explain it, but mm -hmm. the tops were the type where it had a metal top, and you would pull it open, and the rubber it would be a rubber seal Ooh. like the old yeah. days. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and it was yeah. like a little bit extra. But I had friends coming in from out of town, and I know this is crazy. I thought this. I thought it'll look good in the refrigerator, you know. And I, <laughs> I was at Whole Food, and I bought milk in the glass. I wanted it to look. Yeah. You know, I wanted to look like my home. It was a home, Holy. you know, like my mom's house. Right. Yeah. So I walked over and I went to buy it. It was two bucks more than regular lemonade. Mm -hmm. Then I walked away. And then mm -hmm. I went back. I went, what are you doing? <laughs> you are a full-grown adult. <laughs> and over $2, get the god dang <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> well, it worked. Because I'm not kidding you. Because But the outcome is how I reacted. My sister-in-law was there. And she mm -hmm. opened the refrigerator. And, you know, I go over. All my brothers are married. Their refrigerators are filled with. So I, she opens up. She goes, oh, fancy lemonade. I was like, oh, yeah. You know. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't act like. Oh, I I acted like, yeah, that's the type uh, I buy. Uh, totally <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Totally oh, worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah. As I only half it's there, I left the other half in the Rolls and it's spoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having the Rolls Royce fix. Well, I, that's I, why I'm I, driving this. I would have got the milk in the jug, but my lion ate it. So. <laughs> yeah, my lion likes it out of the glass. <laughs> right. Yeah. My, we, we all do weird things. Podcast now. It's us here on Bob and Tom 24 7. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Mark Allison with a look at things you may have missed. The Mexican Navy says it is using ships and a plane to search for three Americans who went missing along with their sailboat off Mexico's northern Pacific coast. The Navy said Monday it's using four patrol boats, a prop airplane to search the area. Apparently, no sign of them has turned up yet. Three Americans were aboard the 44-foot sailing vessel Oceanbound. The U.S. Coast Guard gave their names as Carrie O'Brien, Frank O'Brien, and William Gross. They've not been heard from since April 4th when they were near the Pacific 
coast port of Mazatlan, Mexico. As an ambassador for rats, it's never easy to win over the public, but Runa at the San Diego Zoo has been charged with teaching people the virtues of rats. The African giant pouched rat appears weekly in demonstrations at the zoo to show how her keen sense of smell can be used to find everything from illegal shipments of wildlife to landmines. The organization that trained Runa has started providing the rats to U.S. zoos with the hope of changing the public perception of the animals. Their jobs are not easy given the disdain many hold for rats, including New York City's mayor and his newly appointed rat czar, who's been charged with eliminating the city's rat problem. And that's a look at things you may have missed. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. Tom has moved his official parking spot. Yep. <laughs> he has now officially taken over a handicap slot. It's closer to the ramp, and I've been bringing coffee in for you guys, so I'm... I appreciate your coffee, Mr. Griswold, sir. So we can pound that coffee up your ass. How about that? Oh. We already talked about that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Tom. Why did you stop taking the coffee enemas? Too hot? No, it was too sweet. <laughs> I try to fall asleep, but my ass would be up all night. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, fellas. This is Floyd Tucker, the over-the-road trucker. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7, of course. Comedian Roger Naylor is our guest <laughs> from the Ohio Valley. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. Is your wife a cop? Yeah, it's not the traditional uh, job like we were uh, talking about. I mean, it is very, you know, very romantic. We met at a uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she wow. hates that job. She I'll bet. hates I'll that I'll joke, bet she yeah. does. It is a weird job for a woman to have, but it has its advantages. I mean, what other job can you think of where the woman comes home every single night with handcuffs? So, sure. Hey, hey. We got a little game we like to play called Held for Questioning. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the downside, yeah. my wife carries a gun. Oh, good point. Which makes PMS a whole different ball game <laughs> in my house. <laughs> Our toilet seat stays down. <laughs> <laughs> I take no chances. I pee in the tub or out in the yard. I don't even, I don't even mess with uh, it. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, my wife is a, 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 a cop. It's very weird being in bed with a cop. Do you know I'll how embarrassing him. it is to be in the middle of making love to your wife and all of a sudden you hear, what's your hurry, pal? <laughs> Do you know why I stopped you? <laughs> Do you know how fast you were going? <laughs> I gotta wear radar detector on my wiener. <laughs> it's a fuzz buster. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo! Bob and Tom 24 7. Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you are listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. Yeah, there's Ace Cosby. Howdy. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I am Chick McGee. There's Tom Griswold with a special guest. Tom. Thank you very much. We are joined by comedian Drew Lynch uh, here in the interview loft. Drew. And, uh... Okay, it's not really a loft, it's radio. No one can tell. Uh, Drew, it's good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. I, I know. Well, we have to catch up with a couple quick things here before we get to you, Drew. Um, we were talking about the claw machine, and some 13-year-old yes. kid climbed into one mm -hmm. to get the plush toy, uh, as someone suggested, probably for his date. But, uh, Isn't that sweet? The, the, the fire department had to come get him out. But I have two separate letters that make the same claim. Okay. My son, who has a Ph.D. in math, found out that those claw machines are actually governed by a programmable payout program similar to a slot machine. Really? So what? the owner of the claw machine, if they want the player to only win 10% of the time, they can program the claw to only grip firmly in one of 10 attempts. Oh, that's oh. not fun. The other nine times, the claw does not have the physical strength to close on the target. <laughs> so the claw game is a game of chance, not a game of skill. I'm that, done. I'm done th with it. That's from David. <laughs> Never play it again. Steven 
writes, <laughs> I used to think I was good at the claw machine until my friend's uncle serviced them, and he told me they purposely tuck the toys in tight and the claw is completely random. It's programmed to only be strong oh. one out of ten drops. Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> awful to know. So there you go. We've been getting ripped off by the claw machine. What about the machine with the, the coins on the tray where it has a scooter in the back and you put coins Man, in? Man, those, that's always so tempting, I know. isn't it? it they, they, and you look in there and all those coins are right there on yes. the edge, man. It looks like you'll have $18 yeah. and just, just a milli inch. I bet those are the same. <laughs> milli inches are a new form of measurement. <laughs> Santa inches, milli inches. <laughs> okay, yes. sure. Uh, okay, let's let's uh, meet our guest. Um, D Drew Lynch has joined us here in the studio. He is on the road, by the way. Mr. Lynch will be at the Improv in Kansas City, Missouri. Coming up, uh, what is today? Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. It is. Uh, Thursday uh, 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 through Saturday at the Improv in Kansas City, then Columbia, Missouri, Sunday evening, and then Thursday of next week, the 27th through the Sunday at Helium in St. Louis for some great live stand-up comedy. Uh, what's going on in your life, Drew? Not a whole lot. I uh, I love coming back to the Midwest, and uh, the weather's different in the morning and then in the evening and then in the middle of the day. <laughs> Mid-afternoon, evening, morning. Um, so I hate it, but I'm just going to be here. <laughs> yeah, so you have to pack for like th at least three seasons. Yeah, I, do. I love that your show's inside, Tom. Yeah, um, no. We but... have a roof. Deal. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, yeah, we're okay. We were just talking about this off the air, the fact that... Uh, uh, the weather is different morning, evening, and then yesterday, vastly different, and then today. You see, you're living in California where the weather's the same all the time? Yeah, well, it has, it has, been, um, it has been pretty rainy, and mm -hmm. supposedly that's good. That's what everybody says. They don't know what they're talking about. They just like to say that it's good. They don't want to do anything for the environment, but they want to say that it's good for it. <laughs> um, Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up here in, in uh, Indianapolis, and then I lived in Vegas uh, shortly thereafter. Oh! Yeah, so that was kind of fun. Like in Vegas proper? Or, uh... <laughs> that's seems fancier than what Vegas is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Vegas probably. Like Hendersonville or like... Uh, uh, yeah, I lived in uh, uh, Summerlin just before the oh. all the rich houses. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> yes. I can see them. They're with an eye shot. Yeah, yeah I can see them. <laughs> how, did you, how did you end up in Vegas? Uh, my family wanted to move to do a uh, air conditioning company. So that's a good place. A good place to start, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, you wouldn't want to start it in like Noel Alaska. <laughs> Boy, we're failing up here. <laughs> well, yeah. how good a salesman are you? <laughs> How'd you like it? Uh, it was not too bad. I mean, when you live in the suburbs and stuff like that, it's uh, it's fine. But when you live like when you go to visit like the Strip and stuff like that, it's it's strange because they'll put they'll put like young adult things like you know going to the movies or going to you know an aquarium or something. And they'll put those in the casinos. So, you know, a lot of my childhood was like maneuvering through oxygen tank wires and uh, <laughs> dodge smoke and getting lost in bachelorette parties. You know, the fun stuff. Yeah, I was a man before I was a man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm good for Vegas for about two days, then I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's enough. Uh, yeah. But it, I can't imagine. Being a resident, there's a whole different thing, though. You don't have to sure. spend a lot of time down on the strip. Yeah, and I think if you grow up there before you're, you know, before you can do any of the stuff there, like, you kind of see the other side. You know, you kind of see people. Like, you've I've seen so many people just destitute staring at a at a machine. or, they're, or they're, they're, <laughs> Such they're, a bummer. They're, yeah. yeah, they're, they're <laughs> you know, just they lost the whole thing. And, you know, my parents, like, my parents, they, they had employees who they, either had their wives had to come in to grab their checks or they had to they had to request ahead of time for half of their check to be already put into the bank because simply people just they would gamble they would gamble oh, wow so wow and then they found out that the claw machines were rigged yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> only one in ten times does it actually grip being st i don't know man being strong one in ten times i think that's good numbers <laughs> yeah bad in a hundred not bad right <laughs> yeah yeah, this all started with me saying that if you're a Chuck E. Cheese with your kids, and uh, when it's time to get the big payout, right, you can uh, you cut can, corners. No, you can just say, "Look, I, I, oh, I don't, you don't think this is cutting corners? No, it's I, it's it's just commerce." No, uh, we were like fifty points short of the cotton candy. So no cotton candy. I need to get, get out of there. Candy. No cotton candy. She Sorry. has to pick something else. There, I mean, there is a lesson there, there Tom. Is a Sorry, lesson. Willie. No yeah, cotton candy. Yeah, the lesson is Daddy's going to have to ruin his whole Saturday staying at. 
Chuck E. Cheese oh, and spending 50 wait. bucks to get another mm. Did you see 50 Willie's, points. Did you see Willie's face when I said no cotton candy? I really wanted cotton candy. Okay, I'll get you cotton candy. I didn't candy. even know I wanted cotton candy. Never mind. You just stay right there. So instead, you're just Lori Laughlinning your way through life. I understand. Yes. I'm going You're going to Yale, honey. Honey, we don't have enough for cotton candy. Let's select one of these prizes. Yes. Then you get another choice on that. And when did Chuck E. Cheese prizes become edible, by the way? Cotton candy? I, 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 they, they yeah. had cotton candy. It was delightful. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know like, what? It's better than those toys that they bring home and never touch again. You yeah. like cotton candy? Boy, that was a mother thing. They oh. brought that hot dog toy home and they never touched it again. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I, yeah, we, we've had this six-foot pencil in our house for three years. <laughs> those are funny. It was the grand prize. You ever do your taxes with those? It's real funny. <laughs> well, then Something get, serious with a silly prop. Then you have to get a giant pencil sharpener. Yeah. That's very hard to get your hands on these days. Yeah, go, look at the camera. Well, it's tax. Time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That would be today, kids. Uh, so, anyway, I'm sorry. Are we, do we need to move on. Christy, what's happening at the news desk? Uh, scientists have identified new uh, species of frogs, including one that camouflages itself as bird poop. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> Queensland Museum scientist Dr. Paul Oliver said one of the newly discovered frogs. Latoria Naspella. Oh, Jackson. she's good. Have you Jackson. Ever seen Latoria. <laughs> Jackson. Latoria. Latoria. That's a lovely name. Features a unique color and patterning that closely resembles bird droppings. Why He's, didn't they just go ahead and call it Clitoria? I, I call it a day. <laughs> he Why said not? they believe this camouflage is a form of defensive masquerade to ward off predators. Didn't so, Wonder Woman come from Clitoria? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's Amazonia. So I've never been able to find it. <laughs> so happy. it's in the hood. <laughs> So I'm sorry. So the frog yeah, disguises the, hood. It, uh, the frog disguises itself as uh, bird droppings, bird poop. Tom, that's yeah, that's interesting. I don't think that that's a. Uh, I don't think that's anything new. I, have you seen the back of every frog? It yeah. looks like bird droppings. Yeah, it does, kind of. <laughs> that's gonna be all over my windshield now. Oh, they're frogs. Okay. Hmm. Oh, did you get the update about bird poop? By the way, no one. Remember the it, Tom t turned the uh, radio station upside down. Uh, earlier in the week when he switched parking spaces. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were right. all beside ourselves. Yeah. Well, now he might have to switch back. I may oh. have to switch back. Well, because... you need to tell me because I've been parking in your spot. Oh, it's oh, apparently. A bird poop issue over there by yeah. the bushes. We're going to see. I've, 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 so far in the I would the think that days. that yes. tree would have more bird poop issues than the that's what spot I, you're in. There's a bunch in. of trees over there, too. So all I know is I came out yesterday morning and it, would, it, 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 it was a... Well, you go, fest. well, you go to the car wash every day anyway. You know, so Tom, you uh, with your reputation around here, you should be thankful it's just bird poop. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, 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 Oscar deuced on my windshield <laughs> again. Big. <laughs> Did you know that birds can carry bricks when they're flying? The if Oscar if craps on your windshield, do you go ahead and just try the wipers and fluid? Or do you... <laughs> How mad would you have to be at somebody? <laughs> Crap on their windshield. To we, jump on the hood. Well, you know what the... You know, at the Chicago... Yes, the Chicago sunroof. It's the Chicago sunroof. Drew, have you, are you familiar with the Chicago sunroof? No, please. It's very handy. Uh, <laughs> say you're having some kind of a dispute with someone, mm -hmm. uh, and they have a nice automobile. And the sunroof is open. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, one uses that as a toilet. Isn't that something? It is. Well, I mean, it's just like the, the squatty potty. Like, if you raise your knees high enough, <laughs> right. it's actually really good for your cold. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there I like to see you climb on top of a car and get a row. <laughs> Do you think you can yeah. leave a Chicago sunroof even if the sunroof was closed because when he opened it, uh, would it just yeah. fall in on the guy? Yeah, kind of like the coin machine. Yeah, it all ties yeah. in. <laughs> but that would be that would be funny. The uh, original yeah. ending of the Beat It video, he was up on the car giving a Chicago sunroof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they were like, "Hey, we might want to change." Wait, so why Chicago? Can I ask why they yeah, decided that was a Chicago? Because there's thing? no ketchup. That's why. It's like a Chicago dog. Just relish and tomatoes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've heard you're not supposed silly. to put ketchup on a hot dog anyway. That's ketchup is the best on a hot no, dog. It's not, no, you're not supposed to. I'm a mustard guy for oh, There you go. But I, I think it's the Chicago sunroof, just the same reason it's the Cleveland steamer. Uh, oh, I see. It just is a random just kind of a association. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you could be in Chicago and perform a Cleveland steamer. Well, I, uh, well, <laughs> right now, uh, I want to talk to Josh. Please do. He's back. He 
He's back in his home. and his home. You're getting some work done in the house. Tell me more about it. I sure am. I'm getting that work done with the help of Angie's List. Now, Angie, your home for everything home. Angie doesn't just get your home projects done. Angie gets them done well. There is a clear distinction, and Angie has found it and helped you. Um, I'll just go ahead and read the copy. Angie (laughs) is your personal home expert, having served 150 million consumers to date. With over 220,000 pros in their network, you're bound to find exactly who you need to help you out. I love Angie. Angie makes it easy to research, compare, and hire pros to ensure a job done well. I've got some roofing being done. A cricket is being installed in the top of my house there, Chick. Huh. You know what that is? What no. is a it's a little pointy section that goes next to the chimney to keep the water from resting ah, there. It actually runs down. Nice. I thought it was a bug. Uh, that is another kind of cricket. Okay. Angie has simplified finding help for home projects. I went on the Angie app, and in just a few taps, I was able to find somebody to help me out. And at a good price and a transparent price. Angie can help you get a fair price. And Angie has projects that are priced up front and clearly lay out the cost before you buy. Angie, my go-to for all types of projects. In fact, you can go on there and just research projects and connect with local pros. I'm doing that now because I'd like to get some stacked stone put around my chimney. That's right. Jealous? (laughs) You will be when you see the finished job. Angie can help with hundreds of projects from small repairs to major remodels. Angie, my go-to for anything I need to get done around the house. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Thank you very much, Angie, for all the help you're giving me. Thank you very much, Angie. Uh, Coming up, do you have a sophisticated palate? Sure. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, very, very Certainly. sophisticated. Yes. We're going to find out if you do in a second. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom, 24-7. Comedy via your... Com- I'll take this slow.
stock in a company yeah but if you're uh -huh. just gonna be a, a loud mouth you know beer fueled ass bag in the stands pick the underdog <laughs> rooting for the yankees is like going to a casino and cheering for the house <laughs> well, it's already supposed to win <laughs> you're standing behind the blackjack table going oh dealer busted your ass bitch oh that's my dealer i got my dealer jersey on <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you there's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. I actually uh, have a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Well, check out. Uh -huh. mm. uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety That's first. Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hey. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Josh Arnold. Hello there. He's the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Willie Griswold. Good morning. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. And we have a guest in the studio. He is comedian Drew Lynch. Hey. And uh, Drew is a professional stand-up comedian. Whoa. I emphasize that. <laughs> Because uh, I is don't it want... time to school him? Yes, yes, oh, it is. Boy. Oh, it's, uh, time to school our guest. That's right. Uh, uh, by the uh, Drew, I'm sure you're aware that even the finest uh, athletes, uh, e even a Tiger Woods, for example, takes uh, a good occasional golf lesson. He's out on the range. Someone touching well, up his swing. Well, in the world of comedy, uh, our own Ace Cosby uh, is is a master of the joke, and uh, we have a special feature. And I think you'll uh, you want to kind of what is it? Uh, uh, watch and learn, and here it is. <laughs> Joke of the day. As I'm sure you, all of you can tell, I'll be hitting the gym a lot lately. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looking good. It is kind of it is kind of weird. There's a chicken at my gym too. Oh. Uh, yesterday working on pecs. That was a joke of the day. Sure. Uh, Drew, your, your thoughts? No, I, just, I wrote everything down. Good. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Wise man. I have to study that. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Ace. Uh, okay. Um, another, another oddity I wanted to get out here real quick. Um, our friends at Omaha Steaks are having a... A competition, if you will. Okay. Um, and the uh, the prize is uh, burgers for life. Oh, man. Or 25 years, whichever comes first. And um, you have to volunteer to get a what's being described as a hyper-realistic burger tattooed on your butt. Oh, I see. By famed tattoo artist Steve Butcher. So um, if you want to get into this, if you're willing to try this, uh, and the, the uh, option is yours. 
if you go to omahasteaks.com slash tattoo. Wow. If you are interested. In, and, and we have determined it's going to be probably just on one buttocks cheek, mm -hmm. a realistic hamburger. It's not going to be like you're lying on your side and your your butt, your buns are the buns of the burger. I think that's I No one but you would have thought that. I think that's the only way you could do it. <laughs> wait, wait. Make your buns a bun, yeah. No. Yeah, but then the burger is it's kind of in the yeah, right. gluteal cleft Drew, area. what are your thoughts you on You have to get another one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So the, you're, the one that you currently have would not count. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, dual cheeseburgers. Of course, the famous sculpture by Klaus Oldenburg. I would never get a tattoo of a burger on my butt. It no? Just, it looks so tacky next to the Burger King, uh, the king on the other cheek with the big crown in there. Mm. You got to keep it looking cool. <laughs> that king creeped me out. He was kind of creepy. The Burger King. Yeah. King. yeah. I mean, they're all creepy. Like an affable chap to me. Uh, I don't know. You want Ronald McDonald instead? They're all kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, it's that or a clown. <laughs> Huh. I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's good. These are all good questions. I think, uh, they, I think they mean for Burger King to make you feel uneasy. Do you? I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, Mr. Lynch is at the Improv in Kansas City beginning Thursday evening. Great. The following, uh, let's see, Sunday, this Sunday, I'm sorry, it's at the Blue Note in Columbia, Missouri. And then Thursday of next week, it's Helium in St. Louis, Missouri for some live stand-up comedy. Now, I, uh, the woman I met in the hallway, is that your wife? Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so you're actually on, she's on the road with you. Um, well, we actually live. Um, she lives in Vermont, and I live in Los Angeles. So she's a she's an athlete in um, cross country skiing. So uh, there's snow in Vermont uh, again, allegedly. So um, <laughs> sometimes if we're if, if sometimes if we're in like a, a midpoint kind of like an Indian stuff, we'll, we'll meet. That's great. Yeah, she's a cross country skier. Cross country. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's harder because you don't have the hill. Yeah, you don't have gravity. Yeah. 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 yeah the line of the chairlift is short. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is a one. <laughs> I, just found out, I just found out something pretty cool. Oh, what? Oh, boy. Um, we go. A place where I used to ski, they were, uh, <laughs> they were selling the chairlift chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, Please tell me you bought one. No, because I, I, it would really impractical. You could have the most... Pretentious porch swing in the neighborhood. Yes, <laughs> yes, I, 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 I. It's safe. I mean, you, you hear about the, you hear about the places where they take the stadium down, right? Yeah, and you can buy you know, four cool, seats yeah. that were sitting sure. at Wrigley Field or right. whatever. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I could have bought a. There's a place that Willie likes to shop. There's a home store that had chair lifts like that that huh. they had redone Pretty and made cool. it into like a indoor. Swing chair thing like do, a chairlift. Do they keep the safety guard? Do you, said, yeah. Do you have to pull no, it down on don't yourself? No, you don't have to God, pull the wouldn't guard. Wouldn't that be down. great to have a swing in the backyard that has the pull down safety <laughs> thing? <laughs> Check out the so lift nice. map, see which runs you want to do for the yeah. rest of the day. Hmm. <laughs> so, I, so I'm sorry. So, Drew, your wife lives in Vermont. You live in California. Yeah. Although this year she probably could have gone out to. California had so much snow. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been kind of it's been a lot. I mean, uh, it, it, it's like I lived in Los Angeles not for that. So when the snow <laughs> happens, it's like it's like I feel like it's hunting me down and following me. And you should get like, a little bit of money back. I'm a woman on the run. <laughs> a woman. <laughs> it, no, uh, it's it's, it's got to be pretty tough to carry on a long distance relationship like that. I would assume. I love it. It's actually you know I mean it's just we get to see each other when we see each other. You know, time and distance makes the heart grow fonder, all mm. that good yeah. stuff. So I enjoy it quite a bit. Hmm. How long uh, have you been married? Uh, a year. Yeah, huh? we got married in Verm we got married in Vermont last June. Lovely. And it was, uh, I think, on our wedding day, it was like thirty four degrees or something. Oh, God. oh not, not so lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wore shorts like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good to know. Who would have thought middle of June? <laughs> yeah. Um, we uh, have an interesting story here about uh, the perception of adults about their children, which I found to be completely ridiculous. And did I give that <laughs> According to a survey of 2,000 parents with school-aged children, nearly 8 in 10 believe their kids have a mature, sophisticated palate. Really? They feel their kids prefer foods usually consumed by adults, topping the list of preferred vegetables. Carrots, cucumbers, and potatoes, while apples, bananas, and oranges were kids' fruits of choice. Well, those are all normal very, foods. Very basic. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I, I think that they're leaving out the. I mean, most I would, kids. Most kids. Would you prefer an apple or cotton candy? Oh, well, obviously it's cotton candy. Mm -hmm. if, uh, I, I mean, I think 
Was that how it was presented, though? I guess. I mean... Uh, to me, sophisticated kids' food would be SpaghettiOs al dente. <laughs> you know, something where you take it up a notch. Hmm. I would think it'd be like sushi. <laughs> like if a kid is eight and would rather have a California roll than mac and cheese, that's a sophisticated yeah, palate. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 the, the, stu the study seems to be. Uh, uh, pardon me, these chicken fingers are not under glass. <laughs> <laughs> and I ordered a ski chair to sit in. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> TikTok users are now using, are trying to make a so called healthy ice cream using cottage cheese. Huh. TikToker Ms. Lainey Cooks posted a recipe for the high-protein, healthy ice cream hack to make a strawberry cheesecake flavor. She blends a tub of whole milk cottage cheese with strawberries and a sweetener like maple syrup or honey. She then tosses in more strawberries as well as crushed graham crackers, strawberries. swirling the mixture around <laughs> before returning it to the tub and placing it in the freezer for a few hours. That's why is that healthier? I, uh, yes. I have no if idea it's, why it's healthier. If it's whole milk cottage cheese, why not just make ice cream? Wasn't that one of the misnomers in the 80s of that cottage cheese was a health food. Mm. It was like one of those, uh, mm. like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm getting weight. I'm eating nothing but cottage cheese and bagels. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, ice cream is so perfect. Why mess with it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, why make it lumpier? Yeah. <laughs> it would be lumpier. <laughs> My ice cream isn't chunky enough. It's like tapioca it just, ice cream. <laughs> it's curdled and this lady uh, made it. Uh, it's better. True, do you like cottage cheese? I did prior to <laughs> <laughs> I liked it like two minutes ago. <laughs> I am not a cottage cheese. It's got to be very, very cold. Yeah. 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 Really? It's not just like beer. You got to make it. It's a temperature thing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's got, it, it, uh, this is where a chicken, I have a problem with all this stuff. It's like a chicken salad if there's too much moisture in it. Yeah, sure. You don't want a runny cottage oh, cheese. Oh, God. A God. runny cottage cheese is disgusting. Do you, uh, you like the pineapple in the cottage cheese? Maybe a pineapple ring? How about no. salt and pepper? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what do you guys put in your cottage cheese? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't eat it. Uh, the, Man, I'm glad he's back. <laughs> yeah. The recipe that I got uh, from TikTok, I put Tide Pods in it. <laughs> They're delicious. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't. If you haven't had ice cream in a long time, maybe this is palatable, but I doubt it. No, Just I... go buy ice cream. They're doing a great job with it. Sure are. Uh, some entertainment news notes. The Jim Mersey Collection has acquired guitars from two of the greatest artists in music history. Jimi Hendrix's 1964 Fender Jazzmaster guitar. Overrated. Is this the one that he... <laughs> he is this, did he light this one on fire? He did the not. One he did? Okay, good. He personally owned the guitar, Willie, but gifted it to his friend and fellow Rock Hall member, Billy Davis. No one's heard of him. <laughs> I have not heard of him. Do you know oh, who you Billy mean Davis? Mar is? Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. You don't have to be a star to be in my show. <laughs> I don't know. Is that Billy Davis? I don't know. Who I'm Billy pretty Davis sure is. it is. He and Hendrix were tight. Were they? I don't know. Who, who are the people you're talking about? He's the, they were both in the Fifth Dimension. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. I don't believe. Call <laughs> Billy. The fifth that. Dimension is Age of Aquarius. <laughs> yes. Okay. Up and okay. Away. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, up uh, up Billy away. Davis is a rock and roll blues guitarist. There you go. Um, lesser Billy Davis. And best known for his work with <laughs> Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Not ah. familiar with their work. <laughs> oh, yes. He, is, he uh, born in 1938. All right. Mm. They've also acquired Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Bob Dylan's acoustic guitar used during the U.S. presidential inauguration. Inauguration? No, yeah, that's right. Inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> well, is this the karaoke thing? Silly political yeah. time. U.S. presidential <laughs> inaugural concert at the <laughs> Lincoln Memorial, January 17, 1993. Oh, who's that? Clint? That was Bill. Was that Bill uh, the Hummingbird has no, been uh, at the Gibson's New York showroom. It's also been shown at the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles and Kogart House <laughs> Museum in Hungary. Man, hot women. <laughs> everywhere <laughs> so uh, how about that even more great guitars for jim ursay new jersey governor phil murphy has declared september 23rd bruce springsteen day in his state oh good he's not getting enough attention it also <laughs> happens to be the boss's birthday oh, it's good great bon jovi said what am i chop liver <laughs> Maybe the, he has the his first own person day. to use that phrase uh, <laughs> since 1967 <laughs> The chopped liver thing? Yeah, yeah. That's the best joke since sliced bread. <laughs> now, by the way, back to your story about the kids' palates. If you've got a kid that goes, well, I'll tell you what. I, instead of the mac and cheese, can I have the liver? Oh, that's a yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a, hell of a, that's, that's a young killer. Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you have like escargot liver. and liver pate? Yes. I don't really want the Happy Meal. That's never happened. No. 
We're Never. Gonna, we're going to get a letter from and, someone. Uh, put some uh, catch, uh, blood, uh, ketchup on it, please. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Was okay. Willie a picky eater? I don't think so. I mean, the answer the answer to all this is the, the, there's a reason every restaurant has a kids menu. Mm -hmm. Sure, because there you have a certain level of of taste that you want when you're a kid. You don't want all the it wacky stuff. Depends. My niece is a dietitian, and her kids eat everything. I mean, there's nothing. They never had baby uh, food. They joyless never meals at that time. Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah. kind of More incredible. Post -seven. Yeah, they, they're not allowed to have step ladders, uh, short ropes. And then, and, then everything, and then everything picks up when Aunt Christie comes in. Yeah, yeah, and I take them to McDonald's. That's exciting. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm just, I'm busy over here Googling how to build a gallows. <laughs> Christy, the problem is, though, they're going to go to their friends' houses and they're going to discover yeah. goldfish. No, she has that, too, but I mean, she yeah. gives them He's like reasonable. avocado, like just an avocado, and they eat it. The budget I mean, on it's this amazing. lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the salary is, the last she's just time busting they, avocados. They didn't eat it. They got a beating, no, and then when they ate not. the avocado, the beating stopped. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, well, you know, we'll a sack see. of avocado is pretty good for hitting a kid. It did. Hey. Hey. Only brutal. Hey, the Hawaiian hotel featured. Hey, wait a second. Hang on. A I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I don't Pat, think you are. Yes. When we come back, can you do your avocado song? We don't have an avocado song. <laughs> yeah, you do. We have one about the guy in the with the that was stealing them. Yeah, that's an avocado that's song. Avocado we have Josh. Song. It's not a long song. Wow, that was the quickest lie retraction I've ever heard. We don't have an avocado I mean, song. Have you even done a song? Today? I did one, one and done today. <laughs> well, when we come back, we'll get the avocado song. Let me tell you about Simply Safe, Tom. Good. The do-it-yourself, design it yourself home security system. You know, it's time spring cleaning, clean out that closet. How about take a look at your home security system? Because Simply Safe designed with cutting edge technology and backed by 24 7 professional monitoring. You got an emergency? Well, agents leap to work with Fast Protect technology only from Simply Safe. Capturing critical evidence and verifying the threat is real. You can get priority police dispatch. It's purport, purport, proprietary. See, it's, only it's Simply Safe has this, Tom. 24 uh, 7 professional monitoring. Costs under a dollar a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. Lock and unlock your doors, too. Access your cameras, arm and disarm your system from anywhere right there on the Simply Safe app. And by the way, CNET named Simply Safe their editor's choice for 2023. Customize the perfect system for your home and install it yourself in just a few minutes. Go to simplysafetom.com today and you get a prize. Claim a free indoor security camera plus. 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you very much. Coming back, comedian Drew Lynch hanging out with us. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show you missed later today on our YouTube channel. part of the team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it type two peanut goo. But... Yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 11.30 at night. You shove the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think he ate the rubber band that holds a legs together. I mean, come on. My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go off the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. Okay, these kids. They spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a Jif sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with nutter butters all over their face. It's I, I made this crazy movie called Freddy Got Finger, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, you know, I wrote it, I directed it, and it was a really, really crazy movie, and, uh, you know, it won the Raspberry Awards, and the people said it was the worst movie ever, ever made, made, and all this yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. the, that was sort of the point, was to make the, the craziest movie. <laughs> the worst movie, movie yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Kind of the point of it, right? So now what's happened is, and, and really what's been a really exciting thing about going and, and doing these shows is... You know, people are coming out to the shows. They're bringing their Freddy Got Finger DVDs, and and it's turned out, uh, it's sort of turned into a sort of a bit of a cult. Sure.
sure. You know, mm-hmm. Smash, I've gotten a call from the studio recently that said the, the DVDs have been selling through the roof. They've sold over a million units of the didn't, DVD. And didn't I hear that you, you're going to do a director's cut? I want, now I want to do a director's cut of the movie <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> because there are scenes that just, you know, when you, when you edit a, you know, when you do one of these commercial studio movies, especially a movie like that, they focus group it and you had to change things and tighten it all up. Right. So there are some, some crazy scenes that I'd like to get back into it. But also it's sort of just the, I think the irony of doing a director's cut for me sure. personally is pretty funny. Whenever there's a movie, there's always a porno movie that someone makes based on the yeah. title. Yeah, it was no. called Freddy Got Fingered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to you, Tom Green. <laughs> people actually, to be honest, the things that people really like out of the movie are some of the sillier scenes, not sort of, not so much the gross scenes, but mm-hmm. people, people always come up to me and they say, Daddy, would you like some sausage? Which is this line from the movie. Daddy, would you like yeah. some sausage? So I sing that on stage. Uh, you know, come, come see me on tour. We'll, we'll be singing some of the hits. Sing along. But, that's uh, right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's your stairway to heaven? People, yeah, that's my stairway. I, the Bum Bum song would be my stairway to heaven. That, that went to number one on MTV, the Bum Bum song. When you Google Freddie Got Fingered, the first thing that comes up, the first line is Freddie Got Fingered quotes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing. Yeah. And then you go to that page in the sausage. Yeah. The sausage organ comment is the very first line. Yeah, there's all sorts of very silly lines in the movie. Yeah, it's there's not, a whole pile of quotes yeah, here. Yeah, so. I was in a rap group when I was in Canada when I was a teenager. That was actually, what were they called? We were called Organized Rhyme. We were actually had a record deal when I was mm. 19 years old. No with, kidding. Went right out of ah. high school with A&M Records and we had a number one hit you know, in, in many Canada? markets in Canada. We, we were the much music uh, video award of the year for best rap video. That was sort of the. Is that uh, on your website? Uh, you can find it on there. Yeah, you can find it on there, and you can find it on YouTube. And uh, you know, the thing that was sort of my first sort of realization. Hey, I, I want to work in show business. Let's you know, I was I was sort of like all of a sudden I had this record, and we were touring, and we were doing radio shows, and I, I went and started my radio show, and right after that, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, it was initially a rap music show that I turned into a talk show, which then turned into my TV show. But, uh, but so, uh, yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of great rappers on my... The White Sox postponed Cincinnati, beat Tampa Bay, Milwaukee over Seattle, the Cubs beat Oakland. The American League, the Angels, Texas, and Houston win. Cleveland at Detroit postponed. And then the National League, Miami, Arizona, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and the Mets all win. I'm Chick McGee, and that's your Bob and Tom Sports Update. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Now, just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Are odors in your home a constant problem? Do you live with a smoker, have pets, or simply have annoying kitchen cooking odors that just won't go away? Do you ever hear comments like this? Gee, Janet, I never thought of fertilizing houseplants with cow dung. (laughs) Or has a house guest ever said... (laughs) Great room freshener, Bill. (laughs) What do you call it? Early American locker room? (laughs) You've tried carpet deodorizers, spray mist, incense, stick-up fragrance dispensers, and even plug-in devices that temporarily mask the smells in your home. Nothing seems to work. That's why Home Products Incorporated, a division of Frigamall Industries, is proud to announce its latest innovation. Le Clip. With Le Clip, foul-smelling odors seem to miraculously disappear. Simply put Le Clip over your nose (laughs) and the nose of visitors to your home and see what a difference it can make. Hiya, Mary. How you been? (laughs) Wonderful, Janet. Hey, your house smells great. See how easy? If you pick up Le Clip today and if you're not delighted with the results, we'll send your money back. Le Clip by the same company that brought you Le Blindfold, the product that makes messy, cluttered homes look more neat and organized. (laughs) Gosh, I need to... The house has never looked better. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> Le Blindfold and Le Clip. Pick yours up today. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Hey, everybody, this is Jimmy Pardo. You recognize my voice from the show and my face from television. You are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. All day, all night, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. All coming up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Howdy. What? <laughs> How have I done to you? Pat today? Godwin in the uh, performance studio. It's not not you. Uh, There's Josh Arnold, the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. I like that you were given Howdy uh, a, a, a try on. Uh, a howdy? For, yeah, try it on for size. Howdy. howdy. How'd it feel? Felt oh, good. There's uh, Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. I hit Howdy to this, like, proper man working at a gas station one time. He saw right through me. Oh, yeah. I could not pull it off. Man, oh, really? Man. Howdy. Did you say <laughs> Yeah, when you wave at point blank range, Willie. Howdy, that's sir. Good... <laughs> There's Tom that's, with it, You'd be okay guest. if you were in Arizona or Texas or something if you'd say howdy. So if he would have called me big man, then I know we're good. Okay. He and the guys at the gas station have an agreement. They call me big man, I feel good about myself. All Keep right. it moving. That's hmm. fair. No howdy. Howdy. Any Howdy Duty fans? No, God. no, there's not. Uh, no, Please you go into some howdy. dude ranch and say that. <laughs> howdy. Any Howdy Duty fans here? <laughs> Man, stomped to death <laughs> by six guys. He was singing, this is Howdy Duty. <laughs> um, we have a guest in the studio. Drew Lynch has joined us, a uh, distinguished uh, comedian. Uh, Drew, it's great again to see you. Uh, no, I thought we would uh, briefly go over to see uh, Pat Godwin. This is uh, this was based on a... Uh, <laughs> briefly. This briefly. was based on a song. news story from New Zealand six years ago. Uh, there was a... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, eight years ago. There was an avocado shortage fueling a crime wave in New Zealand. Mm. And uh, you, that's enough of the story for the setup. Do you want to explain well, a guy what? in drugs and stole a whole truck? Stole <laughs> so, whole, so they were starting yeah. to steal yeah, yeah. avocados. Steal yeah. avocados. Yeah. I mean, here's sure. the story. Yeah, yeah. Meth heads shivering cold, wandering around on the side of the road. Headlamp on his forehead, his pupils were dilated. He had a bucket of avocados. A whole, truck, a whole truck of avocados. He's a hopped up desperado. Grand theft avocado. <laughs> avocados he stole. Him. Cops approaching him slowly. California Highway Patrol. <laughs> yes, chips and guacamole. He had to write. Avocados <laughs> Smoking meth pipe Avocados <laughs> He's in an El Dorado Grand Theft Avocado Lock him up <laughs> <laughs> The last avocado oh. This is so beautiful Thank you very much Time now for oh. Today in History March April 18th. <laughs> I had the month wrong. I can never yeah, okay. make fun of you again. Uh, Holy hell. In 1775, Christy, this is a question for yes. you. Uh, Thomas Jefferson got laid. <laughs> he did, but that's not the answer here. Uh, uh, Paul Revere and... The Raiders. <laughs> Better. Keeps just you know keep the Bengals. Freedom I, just keeps I will, getting hotter to the, find. The audience will give you that. <laughs> Paul Revere and the Raiders set out on horseback to warn of a British attack. Also, Mr. William Dawes. He always gets left out. He does get left out. I never even heard the guys. Billy Bell. Bells. Wow. Need the uh, book Tipping Point. The British are coming. The British are coming. Yeah. So one of by land, two of by sea. Yeah. Um, now, uh, on, in 1906, the famous San Francisco earthquake. Oh, that was a bad one. Oh, wow. Uh, if that were to happen today, all the street turds would just float into the... Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, having some problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a big fan street of... Street turds. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, street turds. <laughs> Man stomped to death by... <laughs> a uh, group of vagabond street turds. <laughs> yeah. 1985, Wham! becomes oh, yeah. the first Western pop group to release an album in China. Is that right? I didn't know yeah. that. Wham? Yeah, wham. Huh. Uh, you would have thought it would have been, I don't know, foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> or Asia. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'd be kind of redundant, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it's like China's part of Asia. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have... Here. Uh, uh, in sports, Peyton Manning drafted by the Indy Colts, 1998. Woo! 
move. Seems like yesterday. That was a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> that was a he never did anything. Did of, all, of all the various <laughs> blunders in the NFL, <laughs> yeah. certainly one of the biggest. They, if they go back, they take Ryan Leaf. Uh, Ryan yeah. Leaf guy. That yeah. was a, that was the way yeah. to go. Yeah. He's on a list with Johnny Manziel. <laughs> Uh, Wayne Gretzky played his last game in the NHL in 1999. Okay, oh, that's the great hockey. One. We're obviously at the bottom of the barrel. No. I will break your arm. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a hockey response. Want to go? What do you, you got go? over there? Uh, Josh Arnold has returned to Hello. the uh, I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. He was fishing with his brother. We missed brother. you, Josh. Yeah, only got a few two-pounders. Nothing uh, too noteworthy, no. but no. a lot of fun. A uh, two-pounder is a fish, fish that weighs two pounds, not... What did you think he was doing? It wasn't about? one of my aqua dumps. Oh. <laughs> did you have an aqua dump this No, this no, no. Too chilly in the water. Uh, okay, sir. Putting chilly. that in a bag and then measuring it with one of those fish scales. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, You're becoming your father. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, sir. have to take a picture um, with it after. <laughs> Tom said he never showered with anybody uh, yesterday, but he oh. forgot about his mate, Paula, <laughs> who would always give Tommy a shower at night. Until he got too big to take a shower. Oh, oh what is this? Tom! Someone's popping up. Oh. <laughs> Look how strong I can make it. <laughs> strong? <laughs> uh, Mr. Fister, we added the Wilhelm scream to the end of it now to... Uh, People's uh, Mr. Fister. Oh, Mr. Fister. <laughs> uh, Josh wears a sock on his uh, nether regions when he goes to bed at night. Some of these are jokes. Evidently, that's false. <laughs> that's not one of them. <laughs> uh, I referred to Mustangs as Stang yesterday. Stangs. Yeah, and, any any proud Mustang owner would call. Call, it. call I, You've seen my Stang? <laughs> Evidently, they don't. They were very mad at me. Chick, who's the lead singer of the band The Police? What's his name? The lead singer plays Sting? bass in, in The Police. Oh, Sting Stang? Stang, I was looking Stang, for. Stang, my bad. Stang. <laughs> um... Uh, Pat wears panties to bed. Do you, what? Pat? No. Oh. Where did that come from? <laughs> <What's that? laughs> no, no. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and get that out there. Yeah. Pat wears oh, panties to bed. Wears panties to bed. <laughs> Panty G. If you see, <laughs> if you see Pat in his panties, ask him where. Uh, when's he going? Oh, to... oh Panty G string works that's twice. Very funny. Tom likes his sock loose so much so that he cuts the elastic off the tops of all his socks before he puts them on. Drew, isn't that odd? That is a it's real reasonable. thing. That's super odd. <laughs> now, if it was underwear, what a, that would be weird. What a no, reckless way to live. Uh, <laughs> no security. Yeah, it's, it's it is irresponsible. It, it's, that's crazy, man. Well, he followed that comment up with this one. Uh, you know, uh, Peekaboo is a great game. <laughs> <laughs> with little kids, Peekaboo is yeah. the best. It's the greatest game. Especially when like, you hold up a handkerchief and then you, like you've gone away, they go... What a great trick. <laughs> yeah, that's what peekaboo is. My dad, <laughs> my dad did that with his whole body when I was younger. <laughs> uh, uh, He's still I champion, never got the abu. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. How about that? There you go. And that's it, Tom. Oh, thank uh, you very much. This welcome. is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel.